Welcome to the Crucial Classic Spoiler Alert series. This is going to be a sassy, and when I say sassy, I guess that's just code for I'll be using profanity here and there. <laughs> Modern day take on these huge titles from the golden age of Hollywood. We're going to walk you through the plots and give you commentary on what makes these films absolute crucial classics. This episode of the Crucial Classics Spoiler Alert is covering the movie The Treasure of the Sierra Madre from 1948. It stars Humphrey Bogart, Walter Houston, and Tim Holt. Okay, so they do a good job. They let you know right away this movie is taking place in 1925 because I've seen this movie a lot of the time, a lot of times, and I maybe haven't paid... You gotta pay attention to the details in this movie. Um, this is a movie that is just freaking hilarious, and you can actually just jump in, catch it kind of at any spot, watch it for five minutes, you're still going to have a nice time. But I have always been curious, like, how far back in history was this movie supposed to be taking place? And so we see it's Mexico, 1925, and Humphrey Bogart is standing out some little poster that's showing him the date like that, and... So that's how we're kind of getting the knowledge of when this is taking place. Okay, so this explains what I've always missed from not catching literally like the first five seconds of this movie. Okay, so that little board that he was looking at, it said Lotaria, like you can tell. That's a little lottery results board. Okay, so he's looking at his ticket. He's looking at the board, he crumbles up the ticket, he throws it away, he's all pissed off. He obviously didn't just win the lottery, right? So now he's just walking along through this little Mexican town, and he is on the lookout if he's trying to recognize other Americans. And if he does, he rushes up on them really hard and fast, and he's like, hey, can you... I feel like he says, can you stake a fellow American to a meal, or whatever. And so he goes up to one dude who just, like tells him to fuck off right and keeps on walking <laughs> and but that dude also just drops a cigarette out of his mouth he doesn't like stomp it out so he's looking hard at the on the ground that just fell out of somebody else's mouth but he's seriously thinking about going to grab it and just before he can this little mexican kid comes and picks it up and starts to smoke it so we're getting he's in rags and so we're getting the impression like this dude is um in dire straits okay so then here's john houston's cameo in the movie too he he sees this dude walking in an all white suit got a white hat looks crisp and clean right so he rushes up to him hey can you stake a fellow american to a meal this dude doesn't say nothing to him just puts like a half dollar is what it looks like into his hands and so then the next scene he's humphrey bogart he's at a little bar eating his little meal I don't know why they make restaurants, a little diner. I guess it's a diner, right? But it's a bar because he's sitting at the bar, but it, they serve him food. So it's a diner and he's smoking and he's got a little brand new pack of cigarettes. So after he's just finished his meal, now he's opening up his cigarette, about to light it up. And the diner man is getting all stupid with him, telling him how much money he owes him. And he has to say it to him like three times before he finally like tosses him, Bo Bogart finally tosses him a coin to pay. Now, all of a sudden, because here's where I've always wondered, like, why is he so hateful to this little child? Okay, so now a little Mexican child walks in up to this bar trying to sell him a lottery ticket, like, selling him a lottery ticket hard. He starts out, like, buy one for a dollar or whatever, right? Or, and then Bogart starts to cuss him out. Get the fuck away. Go away. I don't know. I'm not buying no more fucking lottery ticket. And, but now we know why. Because I was like, why is he so pissed off about this little kid trying to sell him a lottery ticket? Obviously, I think, like, that's possibly like the money that he doesn't have he has been wasting it on lottery tickets thinking that he's gonna win the lottery to get himself squared up and so you know he's finally gonna oh i feel like hold up the kid is like four pesos at first for like the whole ticket then he then the kid just starts doing fractions on him and he gets all the way down to <laughs> He's like, well, just buy a 20th of the ticket. Just buy a 20th of the ticket. It's like a dime or whatever. And then you can still win like all of this money. And it's your lucky number. Like he's the little kid's just telling him this. He's like, it's your lucky number 13. You couldn't have a better chance of winning. And he's like, fine, fuck, I'll just buy, you know, give me a 20th for like the, the dime. 
so that I, I don't have to hear your little mouth anymore. And he's just, I was, I've always seen this part of them. And I'm like, why is he so hateful to that little kid? Oh, because look, he told the kid to get the fuck away. <laughs> Or he was going to throw this glass of water in the kid's face and the kid don't stop. Like, at that point, the kid was telling him, like, buy a half of a ticket. And so, like I said, he just kept doing fractions until he got down to one twentieth of a ticket to sell this wall. And right before, though, he got to the one twentieth, Humphrey Bogart took the glass of water and threw it in the soul boy's face. Like, just completely got him doused. And the little boy wasn't even phased. He just, like, for a second was a little, you know, shocked. But he kept right on breaking it down. Like, then he went down to 120th. <laughs> Finally, that full bought the ticket. <laughs> and now this lottery, too. The lottery drawing is three weeks away, though. So, like, what the fuck are you going to do? Obviously, you don't have shit for money. And you just, you know, bummed 50 cents off of some dude that staked you as a fellow American a meal. You bought a fucking lottery ticket that's the drawing's not for three weeks away. So that is exactly the reason why. The next scene, I have it paused. Um, they're coming into some little, basically like a, um, oh, what is the, is it indig, indig, you know, just indignant? <laughs> I don't know the word, but you know, people that are they don't work and so they just camp in the park but i'm just talking about like you're not even trying to find work like you're content to not have a job not have money and you're just kicking it in the park Th there's a word for that um and it's kind of like yeah it is there is judgment in that because <laughs> this fool is lazy as fuck dude so he's just he's lounged out on the park bench in the middle of the day in the middle of this little mexican town in their park just laid out on the bench oh of course my bad okay so yes that is what's going on there is a dude that is laid out on the bench so okay that's not humphrey bogart though here comes humphrey bogart walking in the gates to this park he walks by this fool that's all laid out on the bench like that trips over his foot wakes that fool up who's just passed out on the bench and humphrey bogart is like oh excuse me and so this dude's kind of awake now, right? He was passed out on the bench. Not from being drunk, from being lazy, just laying on the fucking bench. So Bogart walks over to the next bench to him and starts to pull out his new pack of cigarettes that he's been able to buy. And then that makes this other... I, what is the word? You know, the, it's a word that they just label. It's a derogatory word for people that are doing this, that just choose to be bumming in the park in the middle of the day versus, you know, trying to not be bumming in the park in the middle of the day. Um, so now Bogart sees this fool has started to sit up just because he pulled out his pack of cigarettes. And he, he don't even wait for that fool to ask him for his, He's just already offering him if he wants a cigarette. And lo and behold, as we're able to see this dude starting to sit up, we're going to be able to... This is our introduction to the second co-star. I get what was his name? Holt, somebody Holt. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen this dude in another movie. I have. He goes back and forth with the way he looks. Um, I've seen him in just maybe like one other small role. Uh, but he's a good co-star for Humphrey Bogart in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so these two have a little bit of quick small talk. Uh, Tampico that's where they are what a fucking little town to be broken this dude that just sat up okay check him out though I now it isn't quite as blatant as it was looking he's like um yeah if I could find a job that would get me the fare to get the fuck out of here I'd dust the dust brush the dust off of this place off of me as soon as I could. Bogart's like, yeah, you know, you're going to sit here on a park bench until you're three quarters starved. Um, all you can do is try and bum meals off a of fellow, he, I think he says gringos or fellow, he says gringos at some point, fellow gringos, fellow Americans. Um, and then he was like, if I was a native, I'd just go get me a little can of shoe polish and I'd have it made. He's like, but they don't let the gringos do that down here. So that's now we're getting a little bit more. It's like, okay, because you guys are just laying on the park bench in the middle of the day. But I guess it's a little bit more difficult for them to come across 
ways to find work. So they talk that kind of shit, just nothing really. They don't introduce themselves to each other. They're saying, yeah, like if either one of them tried to get a little job, shine in shoes or whatever, like the natives would hound them, wouldn't leave them alone, like would just be saying, you know, you're kind of taking away our work, so get the hell on. So at that, Bogart just picks up his, I don't know, he's got some little package underneath his arms and now his new, you know, his he's working his way through his pack of cigarettes and he just gets up. There is some dude getting his shoes shined. He walks over to him, says, hey, can you stake a fellow American to a meal? It's John Houston again. So the same dude in the white suit and the white hat making his little cameo, the director of the movie. He's reading a paper. He don't say nothing to Bogart. He don't really even look directly at him, lowers his paper, hands him another coin. Bogart has an nerve to take the coin and just look at it kind of like, this is it. <laughs> and this fool, at that point, he puts his paper back up, but just so like, and then he lowers it down so he can kind of like creep his eyes over the edge of the paper. That is so creepy. And he's now he is looking at Bogart when he does that because Bogart is standing in front of him and really is looking at this little coin that he's just giving to him like, this is it and he's just looking at the coin then and he don't i feel like he don't say thank you or anything to this dude that just gave him the money and he's looks back up but he's looking down the street like where is he gonna go to go spend this money and that dude he moves the paper away so like he, it's not all obvious that he was just staring at him so the next scene we see bogart has now decided to invest in getting clean because he was really a mess okay and he's in the little Mexican barber shop. Um, he just got his hair washed and a little shave. And his hair is... <laughs> That's why I really wanted to know when it was this movie supposed to be taking place. Because his hair looks like um, it was in 1925. Okay, like he... His hair is crazy. It looks like... He did get a bowl haircut, like Balfour put a bowl on his head and then cut his hair up short, like to about his ears. Like his hair is like to the top of his ears. That's how long his hair is. <laughs> and he got it all slicked down. Like it's wet, it's soaking wet, right? But he's got it all um, laid to the side and shit, like got a little part way on the side of his head and then that little man is taking his comb and just laying his hair down um he looks crazy but he does take the mirror and he is looking at himself like he is the shit dude so he took his little coin and went and got clean too fresh too clean and he thinks oh you know what too i know like before he, then after that he goes and collects himself a woman to like bogart seems to be um that man right that <laughs> <laughs> so he does he's getting clean because he's gonna go get a woman next too okay so he comes out of the little barber shop and he's walking down the street he sees let me put it like that he sees a little senorita she's pretty she's walking down the street but she's um she looks like she's um yeah okay because she looks at him and then like saunters past and then she turns the corner on the the street and heads into a little bar but when she um is going up the steps to that bar she looks back over her shoulder to see if he is still following her because he he certainly did pick up the pace of where he was walking to as soon as he saw her so anyway she's out far ahead of him and walks into this bar and before he turns the corner to go down to that bar to follow her here comes dude in a white suit again and he says that this is the third time now and he just used up the money that this fool just gave to him and says to him hey buddy can you stake fellow american to a meal and now this fool cusses him out <laughs> he's like oh, what the fuck dude like i gave you money this morning i just gave you money when i was getting my shoes shined and um look you're gonna need to get through the rest of your life and he he literally says that to me he's like you're gonna need to get through the rest of your life without relying on me so and just so you don't forget who the fuck i am here's two pesos full so he was giving him a peso a time and bogart does say oh i'm sorry because and I, we this is true he's like i was never looking at your face i was you know basically like he's ashamed 
He's like, I was just looking at, I feel like he said your shoes and the money that you were giving to me every time. So he's like, I'm sorry. I didn't even recognize that it's you that I've asked this many times. Thank you for the money, whatever. Now they show him basically standing outside of that bar that it looks like that chick went into. But he's standing outside of it. And now this other dude walks out and he's just got a little speed. Hey, can you fellow, stay fellow American to him? And so this dude, he is American and he speaks English. Somebody is like, hell no, I'm not going to give you any money. He's like, but I have a job if you want it. He's like, I'm not going to give you a red cent, but I have a job if you want it. So this dude tells him that the pay would be $8 a day. It's going to be hard work or whatever. He doesn't really explain what it is, but he also is telling him go with him right now down to the ferry because that's where he's got a group of men already lined up but his last man hasn't shown up thinks that dude's probably passed out drunk somewhere so i got one spot left but you gotta come with me right now down to the ferry if you want the job and so he's like all right i'll go so he comes down to the ferry with him it is packed with other dudes and of course who else is there is that dude that he saw in the park earlier in the day Okay, so now it was late at night, right? And this fool is ferrying all these dudes off in the dark. Okay, so now it's, it's the, they're there. And so think about that, like, they've had to leave land to, to go on some ferry to some place they have no idea where they're going. And now it's just some hardcore construction work that they're doing that is very not OSHA approved. Okay, like, they're, they are up way high in the air, lifting up this heavy beam they have no harness they have no they're just standing <laughs> on the scaffolding and it's not even scaffolding it's just like the wood that they're pounding together with nails like they're making a level and then they're going up to the next level and they're just standing on the shit that they've already built but it's very unsafe then okay now a little um somebody's ringing a bell because obviously they're feeding them there too like they're out in the middle of nowhere and the way that they get down from being all the way up there is they just have to lower themselves down on a rope. So uh, just sliding down a free hanging rope. So you got to, you know, not be all. It was crazy. They were showing Bogart was like grabbing that beam and then lifting it all the way over his head, then starting to hammer it. But so like that's very intensive. Your arms would get tired. And then just to get all the way down from that shit. You got to be able to have the strength left to like navigate down this rope. Um, I could never climb the rope in gym. So yeah, I would not be like after working all hard. So, okay. Now they're coming down. the They're coming down the rope just fine. I wouldn't be able to do it. So the dude that hired them is talking shit. He's like, what's up, you dudes? You can't take it. And Bogart's like, well, it's 130 in the shade. And he's like, and there is no shade up there where we're working and so this dude's like, oh, well, just think of yourselves as millionaires having a hot sauna, you know, and you're just having a great time out here. And the sooner you get the work done, the sooner we can get back to town. So that's why, like, you can tell they're in the middle of nowhere doing this work. And this fool's talking about, you know, we'll be finished in two weeks. And just between us, I'm going to give you two a bonus. And here goes Bogart. He's like, well, yeah, that's coming to us because you got us working 16 to 18 <laughs> Wow. Okay. Like there are no regulations, no labor law regulations going on in this situation. Okay. No safety protocol, nothing. Um, I'm sure this man loses lives and he's okay. So he, let's see what's going on. He's got them all the way out there in the middle of nowhere. All that you can see is there is somebody ringing a bell. So they're feeding them out there, but this fool is not paying them as they go along. So, um, Bogart calls him out on that too and he's like as far as our pay goes like what's up with that fool because I haven't seen a buck out of you yet and this dude oh well you know of course I haven't paid you because what the fuck could you do with money all the way out here in the middle of nowhere he's like except you would gamble it and you would lose it so he's like no that's the reason why I'm gonna pay you you're gonna get paid in full as soon as we get off of the ferry back in Tampico okay so now they're showing the ferry coming back to Tampico Okay, so the dude that hired everybody is the first one rushing off of a ferry. But he does. He just gets on the dock and then he waits and lets everybody come around him. And he's saying, oh, you know, the agent was supposed to be here with the money for everybody. And some must have held him up. So you guys all wait here. And I'm going to go into town and track him down. And Bogart's like, you don't mind if a couple of us tag along with you. And he's like, what do you think? I would 
leave you guys hanging? He's like, no, I don't think you would do that. He's like, but I don't even have a peso to buy myself a glass of beer. So this fool sneaks out a dollar and hands it to Bogart. And this other dude is standing nearby. And he's like, all right, you guys go over to the cantina, be there by 2.45. And he's like, I won't be there any later than 3 o'clock. Okay, so now they show the inside of the cantina is 7 o'clock. And of course, this fool is... Um, it's seven o'clock. So, so all that happens in this bar is like at about seven o'clock, it seems like maybe they're finally beginning to ask for this fool is Pat McCormick. And the bartender is like, yeah, I've seen that fool. He comes in here sometimes. He hasn't been here in a long time though. So then down the bar, some other white dude hollers out. He's like, Pat McCormick, what do you want with him? And they're like, well, they said, he said that he would meet us here. And that fool says, and he owes you money too, huh? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, what do you know about it? That dude says, how long have you fools been here in Tampico? And Bogart's like, what difference does that make? He's like, because only foreigners and stupid people have anything to do with that Pat McCormick guy. He always is hiring fools like you. And then when it comes time to pay, he leaves you guys hanging. So, okay, then it turns out this is the first time we find out Bogart's name is Dobbsy. It's just Dobbs, but this other dude is calling him Dobbsy. So he says, how much of that $10 do we have left, Dobbsy? So I guess this fool paid them at least $10, but they sat there. Okay, so then Bogart's like, um, I feel like he says 50 cents. <laughs> and this dude's like, oh, well, that's not even enough for one more drink. But so, and they look drunk. So they've been sitting in that bar all afternoon and they just spent the $10. Well, I guess they were out of town for a while and didn't have alcohol or whatever. But um, And I guess they figured that they were going to be getting all of their money from this full later. So they weren't thinking about saving that money. And they certainly did it. So the next scene, they're just at some little shelter, like literally a shelter. And this dude is handing them each a pillow and a blanket. <laughs> they're just going to go find a spot to sleep in this little shelter. So they're walking through. It's a big shelter and they're walking through to the back and now we're getting introduced to Walter Houston. He's talking all out, talking shit about mining for gold. So that kind of draws Bogart's attention and he just finds two empty beds over near this dude, like right behind him. And now this fool is talking to this other person. Like he don't pay attention to the fact that these two just walked past him. Don't. I say don't all the time. He doesn't. Should I say doesn't? So that doesn't. Does that bother you? I know that the word is not don't, but I'm just speaking freely, okay? He doesn't pay attention to the fact that Bogart and this fool just walked by him. Now Bogart's all listening all hard. And this Houston, the old dude, let's just, he's going to be the old dude because he is old. Um, He's saying, why do you think that gold is so valuable? And the dude's saying, because it's scarce. He's like, no, actually it's because of how hard of the labor it is to find it. He's like, gold is actually not worth anything but to make jewelry and gold teeth out of. And that dude's like, oh, I never thought about it like that. Because he's talking shit about like how far you got to go to find it and how long you have to search for it and shit. And he's like, 10 people might go and one out of 10 is lucky and finds it. And so then this dude says to the, um, whenever people go out searching for gold, they'll set out they want to get 25000 And then they're out there for forever and they're going through their supplies, their provisions, and they're using up all of that shit. And they're not finding anything and then it starts to come down. 25 goes 10, 10 to 15. Or... <laughs> 25 goes to 15, then down to 10, then down to 5, and you're like, if I could just find 5,000, I'd be happy. And he's like, but then flip it, he's like, if you start to actually, you know, find some, nothing can drag you away. You start out saying you only wanted 25, but then you'll not leave until you get 50, 50 turns to 100, he's like, Russian roulette. You always want one more spin. Now, and he ain't talking to Bogart or this other fool at all yet. But now here comes Bogart. He's going to jump in. I feel like he's still drunk, too. He's like, that wouldn't be like that for me. I would only take what I said out's fine. I Nothing would make me want to take more. And so then this dude just starts to say all that. He's, he tells them he's been around the world looking for gold. Everywhere in the United States and then down in Australia and shit, too. He's, like, been around the world looking for gold. And the one dude that he was at first talking to says, well, the way you're talking, like, you've struck it rich before fully. And he's, he says yes. And he's like, well, then what the fuck are you doing here in this shelter? You know what I'm saying? And that dude says it's the gold. He's like, I've never known of a prospector yet that died rich. He's like, you, it's the gold does stuff to men's souls and shit. And that, you know, they will like strike a big and then they take all of that money and they want to go out and find more and then they lose it all. 
So then this dude starts saying, yeah, I know I'm old now, but don't think that my spirit's gone. And he's like, I'd be ready to pick up a pickaxe and, you know, all my supplies as soon as anybody wanted to share the expenses. Bogart's just looking at him and he's like, you know, but going alone is the best way to do it, actually. He's like, but you got to have a stomach for being alone, like out in the middle of nowhere for a long time like that. And, you know, because like partners, of course, you know, makes the, the load, you get to spread out the load. He's like, but murder is always lurking about. <laughs> he's like, partners. Partners will kill each other once they get out there in the middle of nowhere <laughs> mining for this gold. Over this fucking gold. So he's like, ah, uh, you know, that's the gold. <laughs> okay, so they just kind of leave it at that. Bogart says he's gonna pass out and dream about gold and shit. So now it's these two the next day out in the park again on their little benches. And here's Bogart being all philosophical. He's like, you think it was true what that old dude said about how gold changes men's souls? And the other dude, we still don't know this fool's name. Uh... <laughs> He's just like, well, I guess it depends on the guy. Bogart's like, yeah, that's what I thought too. It's like, I don't see that gold in itself is bad. It just has to do with the type of person, you know, that finds the gold. And he's like, it could be as much of a curse as a blessing in my eyes. Okay, so now the dude's like, well, check out who's coming out of the hotel across the street. And it's that fool that owes them money, right? Okay, so this is what I've gotten confused. That dude, so Pat McCormick, he's the one that's walking with the uh, senorita. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so um he's walking down the street, he sees these two fools coming up because Bogart's like, Let's go get him, let's go get him hard and now this fool's like, Oh, you know, go back to the hotel to this lady and oh, you know, where have you guys been? I've been looking all over for you. Let's go to the bar and have a drink. So now they step into this I think it looks like the same bartender that they were asking for earlier. Z told them what bar to go to. <laughs> They're walking in there. Damn. Okay, so this fool orders them drinks. He's talking about, oh, you know, I still haven't gotten paid. So you guys sign up again and let's, where I'm going back out to that place again next week. Just come out with me again next week and, you know, you'll double your money. <laughs> and then the other dude is saying, no, we want all of our money in full right now or else you're not going to be able to walk out of here. And so then that dude's like, oh, hold on. Let's don't stop being friends. No, I'm just trying to work it out with you guys. He's like, all right, I give you guys 25. He's like, I can go up to 30% of what I owe you right now. And then he's like, the rest next week. And they're like, full oh, hell no. So this dude, you know, is like, let's don't stop being friends. He's like, give us another round. And he's like, and just leave the bottle on the bar. And Bogart's like, if you have any ideas about getting this all fucked up. And he's like, oh, no, no, I wouldn't do that. Just trying to be cool. You're just trying to show you I'm cool. So he pours them both. He takes the bottle and fills up their shot glasses again. Then he takes the bottle and he smacks the other dude across the head with breaks the bottle on that fool's head so he falls down and then he punches bogart and they both are down on the ground but that fool that just got hit with that glass bottle gets back up and oh they fuck him up now but he definitely started it okay but everybody got fucked up in this fight because why does Humphrey bogart always get kicked in the face dude <laughs> or no he kicked somebody in the face right in that other movie but he like got fucked up on the cement to his head but in this fight okay that fool kept fucking them up for a little bit too like he wasn't just gonna give in they this fight lasts for a long time to where like everybody in the bar literally everybody that's in that bar they're just sip their drink looking all hard Everybody just, like, gives them space and is just drinking their drink watching this like it's a spectacle. And so, at a point, that dude kicks Bogart, like, in the face <laughs> and knocks him down. So, like, they're seeing how hard they're gonna have to... I mean, they fuck him up. This fight scene lasts a good 20-30 seconds. <laughs> to where, finally, that dude has to say, alright, I'm licked, I'm licked, like, I can't take anymore. And they're like, well, then we'll just give us our fucking money. And he goes into his chest pocket to take out his wallet. But then he's all fucked up. He's like, I can't see. So Bogart grabs his wallet from him, pulls out a stack of cash and starts counting off hundreds. And he's like, well, I think they're probably like in 20s because he's going through a grip of cash. So he finally gets to 300 and then he says over to that other dude, he's like, that's how much it was, right? And that dude's like, yeah, it was 300. So they are at least honest. They only take their 300, but that they throw like three quarters of this stack of cash back down on that foam. They go over to the bar. They're like, here's for the drinks and for the, you know, fucking up your cantina. <laughs> and now they show them 
They're at a little fountain, like, cleaning their wounds. Because they both got fucked up, too. Okay, so here goes Bogart. He's like, you know, we're not very smart continuing to stay in this stupid little town. We've gotten this money, but, you know, we're not going to find another job here. And then all we're going to do is go through this money. And then soon enough, we're going to be bumming for dimes from people again. And so this fool's like, well, do you have... I feel like he says his name is Kurt or Kirk. Um, so this dude's like, well, do you have any ideas? He's like, yeah, let's go looking for gold. Like that old dude was talking about, like, he really has stayed in my mind. He really got the wheels turning into my head. Um, it can't hurt for us to go try and do that. And he's like, plus, you know, from what I hear, like this country is where the gold is just crying to be found. And then now this dude, he's like, yeah, you know, living out in the open is cheaper than staying here. Our supplies would last longer. He's like, yeah, you know, longer our supplies would last, longer we'd have a chance to find something. We'd have to get the, you know, pickaxes and the plates and the burrows and shit. And I wonder how much it would all cost. You know, the, the, the old dude would probably know. Yeah, we could probably get some ideas from him. You know, he's way too old to take, though. We'd have to, like, strap him across our backs in order to take him. And that was like, well, you know what? Maybe not. He looked a little spry. And so the young dude, too, he's saying, you know, I don't know what gold looks like in the ground. I've only seen it in jewelry stores and shit. And he's like, do you know anything about it? And Bogart's like, you know, now when you, th when you, pointed out i don't know shit about this so the dude's like well that old dude might be you know valuable for us to take along and now they're both like let's go find him right now so they go back in the little shelter and he's saying yeah would i go of course i'll go anytime any day any night you know any time of day and he's saying that he has 300 dollars in the bank but he's like it's all the money that he has left in the world so i guess like this old dude just kicks it there in that little town in the shelter he has money that he slowly draws off of but he knows that's all the money he has in the world so he ain't staying someplace other than the shelter okay and so then he's asking both of them how much they have okay and this other dude's name is curtain okay like what like curtain so i think between the two of them like however much bogart said he had 150 and whatever and then now the old dude's saying oh all they have is 500 dollars between all of them and he's like we should at least have 600 he's like that's not enough for us to get all the supplies and the weapons and they're like what do we need weapons for and he's like well for bandits and for meat <laughs> you know like we gotta eat and we gotta be able to protect ourselves and he's saying to both of them he's like isn't there a way that you guys could raise some more and they're like i ain't got a cent in the world well now all of us right of course we gotta keep this movie moving right exactly at that moment the little boy the little mexican boy is creeping up on bogart and he's like senor give me the money senor i win 10% for selling you the winning ticket. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? So that little ticket that he bought, that the drawing was going to be three weeks later, I guess the three weeks have passed now, right? Because he went away for like two weeks out in the middle of the desert. And now they've been back for a week and the drawing happened. And I guess he had a 20th of a winning ticket. All right. So now he's just won $200, 200 pesos. And um, he pays off the little boy because at first he was about to hit him or throw water on him or something. Right. But because he wasn't paying attention to the fact that the little boy, he was like, wait a minute. What are you saying? And the old dude has to say, well, aren't you fucking listening? The little boy is trying to tell you that you just won the lottery so he has to get out his ticket and now he realizes he won 200 pesos pays off the little boy 10 percent because the little boy was telling him that it's the custom that you always pay you know the little kid that sold you the winning ticket 10 percent, and if you don't you're gonna have bad luck for the rest of your life <laughs> so he gives him you know a dollar or whatever has him run along and now he turns right away over to curtain and he's telling him that we're good to go now and curtain's like well wait a minute why is your fortune why does it have anything to do with me and he's like well this fool just said we needed you know 200 dollars more this is what we got now and he's like yeah but why are you putting up my share and he's like well this is an all or nothing proposition right he's like if we go up there and find gold like we're all going to be lighting our cigars with hundred dollar bills and he's like but if we also go up there and don't find anything he's like the amount that i will have put in compared to how much you did that difference is going to be so little it, he's like this two hundred dollars that i just won is not going to be the make or break of me you know what i mean so if we go up there and we don't find anything i wouldn't be able to come back here and live off of the two hundred dollars so he's like doesn't matter to me he's like we need to get up there so let's just share and share alike and they he put it here partner so now they're shaking hands the old dude is kicked back at this point though and he's just looking at these two fools he's got this 
ominous look on his face like oh this ain't gonna last right like y'all are talking this happy-go-lucky shit up front but this isn't gonna be the way it works out now the music's all getting all marchy like they're about to go march and go get their little supplies and shit but it's like this old dude you can tell he's done this too many times and he knows it it ain't gonna work out being all happy-go-lucky like this so the next scene they're actually on a train like they're in he, the old dude's got a little map and he's telling them that when they get to the railroad station that from there they're gonna have to get the bur he's like we'll go to this little town we'll get the burrows and then we gotta go wherever and we're gonna get off and we can't go anywhere near the town or where anybody has ever been he's like because whenever they build a town or they have a little railroad station or whatever like they search for gold right there then and then and there so if there would be gold in that location, they would have already staked a claim on it. He's like, we've got to go someplace where no surveyor, no prospector would have ever seen. So it's like, like they're getting an understanding. They're going to have to go really far, except for the fact that at this exact moment in time, Bogart is passed out. Like he's sleeping on the train. So he's just talking to Curtin. Um, but yeah, like the old dude's got all the knowledge, right? Like he's going to basically be running the show. So all of a sudden the train stops and now the train's getting shot up. And this little group of bandits is riding down on their little burrows from the hills, coming with their guns and shooting at the train. Now it turns out, I guess, the only fools on the strapped on the train are these three. So the old dude reaches into a little suitcase and pulls out three guns and then these fools start shooting it out with the bandits through the window. And they get some of them. I think they kind of hold them off. They definitely don't come onto the train. And then all of a sudden the train starts and Bogart, okay, when's the train? How many did you get? I got three. And Curtin says, oh, I got double that. And he's like, yeah, right. So anyway, Bogart's just trying to brag and brag on about how good of a shot he was and how he would have gotten more except for the train started to move again. And the conductor came out too and said something about like he doesn't thank those fools that they just shot back at the bandits he said something about how the army has the tracks protected usually and it keeps the bandits from ever being able to get onto the train like the the conductor came out and was explaining like that's the reason why they're back up and running and shit like he didn't give any credit to them for shooting it out and right away too just that quick the old dude is back to his little map and talking shit about how yeah once we get started you know we're just gonna have to go hiking for a long way and then and all we'll have to do is blow our nose too and he's like i knew an old dude once that could smell gold and if but just by blowing his and it's like what and he's just going on and they're not really paying attention to him so the next scene says jeffatura municipal and i guess like that's the stop that they've come to on the train so yeah it's this little spot where they're buying the burrows and they don't speak any english right so they've gone through and selected the burrows they want and then they're counting out the money and the old dude that's selling them the burrows is speaking all kinds of spanish to bogart and bogart's just sitting there looking at him real hard um and this fool's just continuing to talk to him for a long time in spanish and then finally bogart looks over to their old dude and he's like what is this all about and the old dude's like oh he's telling us we're going through some real wild country we're gonna have to use our you know like our hacksaws to get through the jungle <laughs> not a hacksaw what is it a machete <laughs> we're gonna have to use our machetes to chop our way through the jungle and then we're gonna be going up to mountains so high they raise above the clouds and there's mountain lions up there so strong they can carry burrows in their mouths and he's like no that's cool he's like i love to hear tall tales like that because that lets you know that very few outsiders have ever been where we're going to and that's what he's been telling them all along like wherever they're gonna find the gold they're gonna have to go so far out of the way into the middle of nowhere that other people have not been that way they know nobody has staked a claim on it and that they can probably also be able to stake their claim without having a whole bunch of people around them. Okay, so now it just shows these fools in the desert, um, climbing up a mountain with their little burrows, and the old dude's getting it out in the lead. He's got his little walking stick, but he's hopping along up the mountain. And the other two are behind him. They have all the burrows, but there's only a burrow apiece. So he, the old dude left his burrow like tied up with Humphrey Bogart's burrow. So he's just getting after it without having to be lugging up his supplies too. So 
I think they're gonna feel away about that in a second. Bogart says, look, um, okay, first of all, before he says look, <laughs> they show Curtin, and he is, like, sweating through all of the clothing that he has on, right? Like, he's just sweat. And Bogart's bringing up the rear, and he's he's going a lot slower. And so then he says, look, he's like, if there is gold in these mountains, how long has it been here? Like, millions of years, right? He's like, so what's our rush? <laughs> he's like, one day here or there more or less you know like what difference is it going to make and so at this point curtain has kind of taken a break too and he's going to come back over and they're going to just be talking shit about the old dude they're like would you look at him climb it's like a fucking mountain goat just getting it up the mountain full like uh we really underestimated his old ass you know like we thought we were going to be having to lug him along and yeah he's running circles around us so now they're getting a little bit like, fuck, we should have stayed back in Tampico waiting for another job. And, you know, Bogart's saying, like, the old dude's part goat for the way he's climbing. And then Curtin's like, yeah, and I can't believe how he can go all day in the sun without any water. And Bogart's like, well, he's part camel, too. So then all of a sudden he looks down at a rock at his feet and he sees gold veins in it and he takes the water. At this point, they had been sitting down. They were drinking out of their little water pouch. Okay. And he takes the water pouch and he starts pouring water on it. And then he's like, look how it shines and it's a vein of gold and it's running all through the rocks. And he's like, look, it's over here too and it's over there. So they're taking this water pouch and they're pouring their water on all of these different rocks that they see these speckles of gold in. And the old dude is literally, he's up the mountain away from them. So Curtin starts shouting out to the old dude to come back down. The old dude, he's down there just like that. <laughs> and so... They're like, look, we we hit that, and Bulger's like, what's it called? The mother load. And he's looking, and he's like, that wouldn't buy you guys a meal back in the cantina. And he's, they're like, why? And he's like, because it's called Fool's Gold. And he's like, we passed, like, five um, patches of that so far over these days that we've been, I like, you guys didn't notice it before that, and... He's like, and there were some other places that we've been so far where there probably was gold, but it wouldn't have been enough, you know, to like, again, buy us a meal back in town, blah, 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 blah. He's just giving all the, and then he's like statistics about like things that he's already seen, but he just that quick knew it wasn't worth their time to stop and, and dig for it. And then he tells them too, the next time that you guys think that you see something, go ahead and holler for me before you start splashing around and dipping out our water like this. He's like, water? All the fuck the way out here is a very precious resource. He's like, sometimes we may find it's more precious than gold. Uh, and he's back up the mountain. So now the next scene is they're going through a little um, dust bowl scene. It's like they're just out in the middle of the damn desert and the dust is just blowing all around them. So they're getting like buried in the sand that's blowing all throughout the air around them. And the dude's like, oh yeah, this is a norther. When the north wind starts blow, makes the desert stand up on its hind legs. It's He just knows everything. All right, the next scene, they're in the rainforest. It's not the rainforest, though, right? It's just the jungle. There's no rain around here, but it's this thick-ass forest, and they are having to use their machete to, like, go every step that they're taking. And then um, the old dude turns back to them. He's like, oh, there's only a couple more miles left of this shit. Then we'll be out. <laughs> and these two young punks behind him, they are barely alive still. <laughs> okay, so the next scene, they're all around the little tiny fire that they've built, and these two are passed the fuck out. You got knocked the fuck out. Full, they are laid out, just passed out, okay? He's talking to them. They are passed out. He is tearing up a little bowl of beans, and he's asking, he's like, hey, fellas, want some beans? they are snoring and he says um you know we're about to hit some really rough country tomorrow you should have some beans <laughs> they don't hear him <laughs> and i evidently when he's gonna offer to them that they're about to hit some rough shit like if he thinks it's about to be rough well then what the they're i don't know if they're gonna make it with him so he's just looking at them they're not coherent he whips out his little harmonica. I'm just going to start, you know, playing a little hoedown show. To, you know what I mean? Like, it's a real lively little song that he's just getting it with his little harmonica. And these two don't move a muscle. And so, okay, now it's the next day. And they're 
I don't know, like, there's some forest behind them, like, some jungle behind them, but the old dude is, like, squatting down in the sand and shit. And just to, he, Bogart is giving a great performance right here, because he's got to show, like, how not up to the old man's level he is, physical fitness-wise. Um, he's bringing his burrow up behind the old dude, and he's, like, stumbling, like, he falls to the left, he falls to the right, he comes back to the middle, you know, just barely still able to be walking steps. And <laughs> the old dude is digging in the sand. And Bogart literally... <laughs> oh, so this movie is fucking hilarious, okay? They, I, they didn't mean it to be a comedy, but I think they had to have at the exact same time. He is on the ground now flat on the ground um like he saw i think like all that he was waiting for was to understand that the old man was like chilling for a second and so because the old man wasn't still moving ahead he um is laying down in the desert and the other fool comes up from behind him just comes up to a rock and he's at least sitting on the rock and so but as bogart is just in the the gravel it's it's more of a gravel than sand situation and he's like you know what i'm thinking he's like i'm thinking that we need to give up <laughs> all right so at that um the old man like loses his fucking mind he starts um cussing these two fools out telling them how dumb they are and how how little bitches they are he's like i got two little bitches out here all the way out here with me you know, first little sign of this or that they want to head back into town because that's what bogart was like we should just abandon the entire outfit out here and head back to civilization and so then that's, the old man's like head back to civilize and now he just went off on them putting them down and you're so stupid this that the other and bogart grabs a rock and now he's back up on his feet and he tells that old dude to shut up or he's city he'll smash his head in and he goes he's pulling the rock back to do it and curtain jumps in and he's like don't do that he's like can't you see the old man is going crazy and he's like just continuing to go on and saying how that's fine he's like go ahead no fool go ahead and smash my head in because you two are gonna die out here without me and he's like you guys are so stupid too like you can't even tell the riches that are, you're standing on right underneath your own two feet and so now everybody goes down to the ground and i get the old dude just by the way that the ground is looking right here can tell like they've hit the mother now they have hit the mother load spot right like they all they need to do is just set up right there and they've found the gold and so they're all grabbing handfuls of it. And he's like, yeah, but don't even waste your time. Like, none of this stuff that we're seeing right here is worth our time to actually dig right here. He's like, we're in the spot. But he's like, it's up there at the top of the mountain. He's like, this shit down here is coming from a richer spot. And so then he put, and it is like still way over their head. But he's like, up there, up there is where we have to go. But at least they're at the summit of this one mountain. They've probably trekked like, 60, I would, um, 60 miles from where they started out, where they bought those little burrows. So now the next scene, they have set up their little camp and shit, and now they've got the little pans in the water, and they're just filtering out the gold. And so they just, they're all three hovered around this one little tin, and there's just a little bit of, it looks like sand, like that. that's what they're all saying, well, except for the old dude. They're like, wow, that's it, that's gold, it doesn't shine. He's like, yeah, no, it'll shine when we take it back and it gets refined. He's like, that's some other dude's job. Our dude is just to be up here and mine it. Um, and he's like, gold isn't like a lot of other gems. You know, it doesn't cry out to be picked. It's not like, you know, stones in, in a riverbed or something. You got to know how to identify. You got to know how to recognize it. And he's like, no, but this is it. Like, it's rich up here, too. Um, but he's like, we need to go ahead and set up our camp, actually, back down the hill. And Bogart's like, why are we going to go back down there when the digging's up here? And he's like, just in case somebody comes along, then we can maybe try and fool them that, you know, there's no gold. Because, like, if we have our camp right up here where the gold is, if somebody comes up on us, they will see all of this fucking gold. And, um... He's like, that's, you know, our safest bet. And that the other dude, Curtin, he's like, well, shouldn't we go back down to town and file a claim? And the old dude's like, no, that's not even safer than just staying here and digging for it and then taking it all back down. He's like, 
We go down there, we file a claim, word gets around, and then everybody's going to come up here. Or we're going to get down there and some big, you know, mining outfit will have paperwork to show that we don't belong up here. So he's like, let's just, you know, we're here, we found it. There's nobody else around. Let's just take our little campsite a couple of, you know, 100 feet down from here and we'll just work up here and go back down the hill and camp at night and not go spreading the word that we just found this shit. So the next thing, they've built like their little, I don't know, they've put together some little trough that they're going to have to wash off whatever they find. So Bogart's got a shovel and he's shoveling shit into this trough. And then Curtin's up the hill and he's asking if they've got the trough full. And the dude's like, yeah, it's filled up to the top. Go ahead and let the water out. So now they're rushing water down their little trough system. And Bogart was saying like he didn't realize that the hardest part of finding the gold is actually this work right here that they have to do to like collect it. He's like, I thought it was just like in gold bars. We come up here, we find it, we load it up, we take it back down to town. And he's like, I didn't realize like how labor intensive it is to actually just be able to get it together because what they are seeing or what they're showing, it's like sand. So they have to rinse it off with that water system they've built. And then they put it in little pouches and that's how they um, collect it. So now they're inside of their little tent uh, that night and the old dude's like just kind of divvying shit up. He's putting it in these little pouches and Curtin says, how much do you think it is by now? The old dude's like, oh, it's probably about 5,000 altogether. And so then Bogart says, when are we going to start dividing it up then? So the old dude, he's, you know, they're all, Bogart's laying down. Curtin is helping this dude. They've got a little scale thing going on. I don't know. They've got some type of weight in one side and then he's pouring their gold powder in the other little tin. And when it balances out, they know that's how much they've got. And then he takes it and he pours it into their little pouches. And so he's doing that and Bogart's just smoking a cigarette, laying down, asking when they should divide it up. And the old man gets a dirty look on him, but Bogart can't see that. He gets a dirty look on his face and he's like, whatever you say suits me just fine. And Curtin jumps in and he's like, well, why divide it up at all? He's like, we're all going to be heading back to town at the same time when we're done here. He's like, why not just take it back to town, get the money for it, and then we just divide up the money for it. And Bogart's like, no, I think I'm more for dividing it up now. That way each man is responsible for his own share. And then the old dude, like the old dude's just going back and forth, right? And he's like, no, that suits me just fine, too. He's like, I'm not really very keen on having to, you know, guard your share. And now Bogart's going to get a little attitude. And he's like, well, who asked you to? <laughs> and the old dude's like, okay, yeah, no, that's right. You didn't ask me to. He's like, I just thought, though, that, like, out of the three of us, I was the most trustworthy. Now Bogart's all offended. He's like, who's trustworthy? Like, who said you would be? And the dude's like, no, wait a minute. I said trustworthy. I didn't say honest. He's like, as far as who's the most honest, who can tell? <laughs> so then the old dude's just running out some scenarios. He's like, all right, so let's just break it down one time. Say, like, I'm off in the mine, and you're out, you know, just kind of doing whatever, and Curtin has gone back to town to get more provisions, and he's like, that would be your opportunity to just take all of our shit and leave us all hanging high and dry. And Bogart's like... He is playing holier than thou. He is like, well, only a thief at heart would think that I would do something like that. And the old dude just starts to laugh. And so <laughs> um, now Curtin says to the old dude, he's like, all right, well, what about you? And he's like, oh, he's like, um, look, by now you guys have gotten hardened up and like you're you're at my level. So he's like, if I was going to try some shit like that. Um, he's like, actually back up. He's like, how much we have right now wouldn't be worth anybody trying to jack all of this shit and go back to town. But he's like, you let this shit grow up to about 300 ounces. And I don't know what that equates to money wise, but like a fuck of a lot more money. He's like, if it gets to be that much, he's like, think about this type of shit. You guys are going to do that. And so then that's when Kern's like, well, what about you? And he's like, oh no, don't worry. And he's like, this is the reason why I'm the most trustworthy is because you guys are at my level, and if I tried to jack this shit and be, like, running off with it, and you could see that that's what I was doing, he's like, you guys could run circles around me, you would catch me, and you could hog tie me up, and I wouldn't get away with this. 
And he's like, that's the reason why I'm the most trustworthy is because I like I the most should not be trying to fuck you guys over. And so um, Curtin's like, okay, well, if you put it like that, I can see what you're saying. He's like, but when I think about this, I think we do need to start dividing this shit up at the end of every night, just giving each man his own share. And the old dude's like, no, that's cool. Um, but when, again, when we get to like 300 ounces, it's going to be like impossible for us to all be carrying our little share around our necks. Like we're going to get to the place where we're going to have to hide our shit from each other. <laughs> And then he's like, and then, yeah, once you find a hiding spot, you're just going to have to be walking around worried all the time that, you know, one of the two of us doesn't find your shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> Bogart looks at him, he's like, well, you got a dirty, filthy mind. Huh? And um, the old dude's like, no, 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 I ain't dirty. He's like, I just have done this enough times to see what starts to happen to even supposedly decent people when gold is at stake so just with, right away you don't say nothing else he just starts to um take all of that shit that he had just put in the one pouch and he's like all right here she goes three ways and so he puts it back in the little scale to divvy it out right like he's gonna fill the cup that's your share he puts and then somebody hands out their bag and but when he's doing it everybody's eyes are just all on it really really and like and he's just doing it to like the speck of gold and they're all just watching really hard so yeah it started <laughs> Okay, so it's the next day, and Bogart's in their little mine shaft with his pickaxe, just like hacking away at the the wall of their shaft, right? Trying to just get the shit out so that um, Curtin can collect it in the little wheelbarrow, and then he's taking loads out to the little trough. The man standing up, the old dude standing at the trough. So like they they're at their own little stations, right? But Bogart's just like going at it, like for some reason he's well, okay, because at the very beginning when they were just taking that first little tin of it and the old man understood yes they have found some actual gold um they were both asking him how much do you think we're going to be able to get out of this thing all together and the old dude was like well it's going to depend on how hard we work each day you know what i mean like we got to get after it each day to get the most out of it so you can tell that's the reason why like bogart's just going ham on this thing right then He's all pissed off, just hacking away at it. So, Curtin, they show him he's taken a wheelbarrow full out to the little trough. And all of a sudden, you hear a big old collapse inside of the shaft, and you just see dust coming out of the door. So, Curtin, he don't run over to it. <laughs> He goes, but he goes over to the door of the shaft, and but just, he's right out the doorway. This all this dust is coming out into his face, and all he says is um, "Dobbs." He says it one time, <laughs> then he looks over to the side, you know, like away from the situation. <laughs> his eyes are all suspect, right? Like he's just he's showing his character right now, like what the gold is doing to his character. So he's looking away. And then he turns all the way around and he starts to walk away. And then, but he takes like two steps and then the music changes and do, 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 you know, it gets all, and he's like, okay, he's going to be a good person now. So he, he turns back around to come back to the, to like seriously, um, <laughs> see <laughs> if he can be of assistance to this fool trapped in the shaft, right? So he, okay, he really has to do a rescue, okay? He has to do a surgeon rescue because he has to go through, like, he goes into the shaft. He's having to climb over the rocks and shit and just find little holes. I mean, like, he goes far into the shaft to find Humphrey Bogart um, passed out and kind of buried underneath not like a whole bunch. he wasn't like badly buried or anything but like he has to lift a little bit of shit off of him and then gets him up and he's all passed out so he's got to lug him out of there like he wasn't when he said dobbs all soft <laughs> one time <laughs> way out of the doorway of the shaft <laughs> That fool wouldn't have been saying, yeah, like, here I am, come and help me, okay, because he was passed out. So this fool, he, his conscience did kick in on him. Um, but then we saw, like, how drastic the situation was. Like, he really did have to go save him. 
So now he's just, and he's pulling, Bogart's all passed out. So he's just pulling this passed out Bogart back out through all of those rocks and shit that he just climbed over. Gets him out to the door of the shaftway and hollers out for the old dude. Cause for some reason, the old dude's all got his burrow loaded up and he was heading down the hill. I don't know. Like he was going probably back to their campsite, right? Cause they don't camp where they're doing this work. And so the dude stops and comes and runs over and, you know, the curtain just lays him down on the sand and, um, old dude's looking at him he's like oh no he's coming around he's coming to him he wakes up he's trying to get up and the old dude's like wait no just lay there for a second until you get all your senses back about you you know so you don't in case you have a concussion or whatever and um bogart's like what happened and curtain's standing over him he's backed up he's leaning up against the rocks and he's just looking at him very weird and he's like the shaft collapsed on you and <laughs> he's like he reaches and he feels his head he's like i, I took a, a knock on my head and the old dude's like yeah you know it happens and he's like well how did i get out and the old dude says curtain pulled you out and so then he looks over at curtain he's like i owe my life to you partner and curtain he's still looking all weird he's like yeah don't don't say anything about it don't think anything about it. you know it's like floy almost left you in there pretty much <laughs> like i was i mostly was about to leave you in there <laughs> Okay, so the next scene, they're at a little campfire again. They're back down to their campsite, right? And um, Dobbs has just collected his little share of the gold for the day or whatever, right? He's got his little pouch. So he tightens it up. And then he's right there. The two are sitting right there at the fire with him. And he's all looking at him all hard, though. Like, he's going to try and sneak away from them, like, while they're sitting right there. <laughs> So you can tell that, like, um, Curtin can see that this fool is just trying to, like, like get him to look away, right? <laughs> so he rolls over away from him. <laughs> and then Bogart just books it out of the little campsite, you know, past their tent. So, like, he's going to go put his shit in his hiding spot, right? They, so the old man said, once we start dividing this shit up every day, everybody's got to come up with their own hiding spot of where they're going to put their shit. And then... After that, too, like, you're just going to have to hope that the two of us, whoever the two are left, you know, if it's you, if it's you, if it's you, like, we got to just hope that the two of us haven't gotten to a place where we're trying to find where you keep your shit, too, because then we'll know. And if we feel like jacking your shit, then we will. <laughs> um, that's why uh, Curtin just rolled away like totally put his back to bogart and the old dude he didn't give a fuck like he just didn't he was acting like bogart did not just walk away so curtain says to the old man he's uh, with his back rolled away he's like what are you gonna do with your share when we get back down to town and the old dude's talking about how you know he's spry enough to keep up with a hard day's work still at this point in time but that you know, in a week, in a month, in a year, he ain't going to be where he's at right now. And he understands, like, he needs to just retire, right? <laughs> and so he's like, when he gets back to town or wherever they get back down to, he's going to buy a little hardware shop and just kick back and read comic books all day. Um, and he's like, so what are you going to do? And now um, Curtin's looking off. Now he's rolled back over and he's looking up at the stars. And he wants to buy um, a piece of land and he wants to grow peaches. <laughs> it's like, um, why peaches? <laughs> and he's just, he'll go and say that he remembers when he was a kid, like his family, like, I feel like, well, no, this is 1925. I was going to say, I feel like it was in the Great Depression, but that hasn't happened yet. And they're in Mexico too. So, um, Anyway, he's just saying that, like, at one point in time when he was a kid, like, his family did that for a summer, and they all stayed in the little cabins where, you know, where the, the, the migrant workers stay when they do that type of work. They basically, like, stay on the property, and they have these little cabins for them. And he was just like, it was a real family atmosphere, and it was just, like, the best time of his life, and they were picking peaches. And by this time, Bogart's back, right? He's walking back up, and he's got a... He hears curtain talking about how he wants to buy ever since that time he's wanted to be a fruit grower and oh the joy that it must be to see your plants flower and bear fruit and shit and so bogart is looking at him disgusted and he's he waits for that full to finish and then he says to the old man he's like what the fuck is this about <laughs> and the dude is like we're telling each other what we're gonna do with our money when we get back what are you gonna do and he's like, oh, that? He's like, I've gotten that all figured out. He's like, the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to take a Turkish bath. I'm going to sweat it all out. You know, sweat this grime off of me. 
And then this is where the ladies uh, thing comes into play. <laughs> he gets, it's like, I feel like he kind of gets graphic because right away the old man already, his face is changed because it's like right away, as soon as he said this Turkish bath, he knows where this fool's mind is going and his face has, has kind of like dropped. He's like, he don't want to hear about it, right? Like he don't want like up all the way out in the middle of nowhere like this. He don't want to hear what's on this fool's mind. Because, like, I, I feel like he gets very specific about then after he's all bathed up and clean what he plans on doing with the ladies of the night. So, okay. No, don't let me say it like that. He, They did a great job. This is 1948. Okay, so they do it all with eye work and in, insinuations, right? So, okay. This is what Bogart said that he was going to do. He's going to go back to town after he gets his little bath or whatever. Okay. Then he's going to go and buy a whole bunch of clothes and he's going to get like dozens of everything that he buys. Then he's going to go to a restaurant and he's going to order the whole entire menu. And he's like, and if something isn't just right, he's like, or oh, fuck, even if it is just right, I'm going to cuss the waiter out and make him take shit back, you know, like just so he can be a big shot. And so then the curtain says and then what's next on the program and then bogart says well what would be and then everybody got all quiet and disturbed <laughs> the old dude i mean they are all they're just all sitting there looking like they're just all disturbed and so then the old man's like if i were you too i wouldn't even think or he says something else think or whatever about women he's like it's not good for your health um okay so then the old man says, like, I think that now also we should put a money cap limit on like how much money we're going to grab out of this mine. And then once we get to that dollar amount, we would all agree, like, we're going to just pack it up and head back down to town. And so Curtin's like, well, how much should it be? And the old dude's like, 25000 a piece. And right away, here goes Bogart, right? Like this, is, what did he tell the old dude in the very beginning when they were in the shelter? And the old dude had said like 25,000. He's like, you'll hear people say, you know, oh, we'll work to 25,000. Then 25,000 turns to 50, then 50 to 100. You can't get people to leave the mine. And Bogart was like, no, I would never do anything like that. If I said 25,000, I would stop right when I got there. And so now they haven't made that much yet, but they, it, they feel pretty strong that they will be able to make that much. And there goes Bogart saying, oh, that's small potatoes. Like, that's bullshit. Like, we didn't come all the way out here just to only take that much when there could be so much more. And so Curtin says to him, well, then how much do you say it should be? And he's like, 50 at least. He's like, 75 a piece would be more like it. And then the old man, well, that would take a year. And he's like, that's only if the vein holds out too, which he's like, which it probably won't. And he was like, 25,000 is plenty enough for me he's like it's enough to last me the rest of my life and then here goes Bogart <laughs> and he's like sure that's because like you're an old fool you know what I mean like you're old as hell like you don't have much longer left to live to yeah it's 25,000 is gonna last you the rest of your life but what about us like half your age full <laughs> like that's fucked up you're only looking out for yourself right like we need more than that in order to be able to kick back the way you're going to be able to off of 25 g's and so um curtain jumps in and he's like well 25 g's is more than i plan to make coming out here so he's like that suits me just fine and um bogart says well that's stupid though like if there's so much more than that here and uh curtain says well we don't need to be hogs about it. And now Bogart's all offended. And he's like, oh, so I'm a hog. And now he, check him out right away. <laughs> he's all, and as far as that goes, like I would be well within my legal rights to claim twice as much as whatever you're taking out of here for. And dude looks at him. He's like, why? He's like, well, you can't forget that I put up the lion's share of the cost for us to get up here in the first place right oh what back when he won his little 200 dollars lottery ticket and he was telling that full let's go do it because if we find stuff we're gonna be lighting our cigars with hundred dollar bills or if we don't find anything this little 200 dollars difference between what you have and what i have to put up is not gonna be enough to matter worth a damn but now that they're up there just because of that little extra two hundred dollars that he put up he's telling this fool that he should be able to take home twice as much <laughs> 
gold as this fool gets, no matter how much they collect. <laughs> so he's trying to tell him, like, if you think you only want to take 25 G's full, like, I'm going to need to take half of whatever your, your 25 would be because I put up $200 more than you did. <laughs> And this fool right away, though, he's like, no, that's right. You did put up the majority of the money. And he's like, and I always meant to pay you back for that. And Humphrey Bogart is still just talking shit. Yeah, you know, in any civilized society, like, that's the way that, you know, the, the main stakeholder gets to have them, you know, most of the, the claim. So Curtin gets up. They're, they're still talking, you know, he's going off. Bogart's going off. But Curtin gets up. He walks through him and the old man takes a little scale, goes over behind them and measures out some gold dust. And comes back over, um, cause the old dude's like, well, you know, I just think it would be better if we don't put everything on a money basis. And now Curtin comes back up, hands him a little cup of the gold dust and says, here you go, Dobbs, this is what I owed you plus interest. Dobbs takes it, stands up, throws it out, throws it into the fire. Oh, uh, what the fuck? What the <laughs> And he's like, well, you know, I just don't like to be called a hog. Like, just, just don't be calling me names. Right. So it's like, oh, <laughs> Okay, so now they're all in their little tent. Okay, they sleep in the same tent. They all have their little cots, but they're they're on the floor, on the ground. And all of a sudden, Bogart wakes up because you can hear the burrows making noise. And he looks over, and the old dude isn't in his little cot. So he gets up. He's slapping on his boots. Uh, curtains passed out. Bogart grabs under his pillow, gets his rod going out to take a look, bumps into the old dude in the forest. Now they're more in the forest and the old dude has his gun too and point cocks it. <laughs> he gets it ready. He points it at Bogart and says, hey, better not jump out at me. I'm liable to let you have it. And Bogart's like, well, same for me too, fool. He's like, what the fuck are you doing out here for a midnight stroll? And the dude's like, no, I heard, you know, the burrows and, you know, there's a lion out here, a mountain lion out here. So I wanted to make sure the burrows were okay and bogart's like well you know what i think i'm gonna go check to make sure the burrows are okay too and the old dude's like do you fool so he comes back to the tent why is this old dude just wearing long underwear though like that's he, they don't have robes or anything like this is an example of a movie this i as i'm really thinking about this it's probably the first old movie that i've ever seen where you know they're not wearing robes i thought that might have been a part of the code but this fool is just wearing long underwear from head to toe and it's um uh you know it's like um <laughs> Is this okay with the code? <laughs> because, um, you know, he's just rocking his long johns, dude. But he's back in his little cot, slapping off his boots. And then I feel like now Curtin's going to wake up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Curtin just opens his eyes and he sees the old dude getting back, settled back into his cot. And he says to the old dude, he's like, what's up? And the, the fool's like, nothing's up, dude. And now Curtin notices that Dobbs, and he's like, where's Dobbs? And the old dude's, he's out it's in the dark poking around out there. And Curtin's like, well, he's taking a long time. He's like, I'm going to go have a look-see. So he slaps on his boots, grabs his gun, starts heading out. They cut back over to where Bogart is. Well, he went to his pile of money, right? Like he went to his hiding spot where his money is, and he's just counting his shit. Because what, like, so that's what everybody's all suspicious about right now, right? It's like, oh, what the fuck do you need to leave the tent for in the middle of the night? <laughs> Except for an excuse that there's a mountain lion in our camp or whatever, you know what I mean? But, like, unless that's actually what's going on, are you out here in the middle of the night, like, poking around trying to find my shit? So I got to get up and go count my shit just to make sure you didn't actually find it. And maybe while I'm out there, I'll take a little look-see to see if I can find yours. So, like, it's, yeah, the, their souls have been affected by the gold now. Okay, so then um, Dobbs comes back. <laughs> the old dude is just laying there. <laughs> he ain't asleep, but he's just laying there. He's trying to mind his fucking business, right? And so um, Bogart just comes in. He's going to sit down. He's starting to take off his boots, but Dobbs, or um, not Dobbs, what's that fool's name? Uh, Curtain. His little cot is right at Bogart's feet so as he's sitting there taking off his boots he sees that Curtin isn't there he says to the old dude where's Curtin the old dude oh uh, he's out there poking around in the dark somewhere he said he's gonna go have a look-see <laughs> and so they show Curtin 
He's at his stack of cash. She's just counting everything up, putting it together. Okay, so Bogart is getting ready to get up and go um, back out. And just as he's getting ready to get back up, he can see Curtin at the top of their little trail coming back down the trail. So he don't leave. And Curtin just comes in the tent all hard, just walks right past Bogart and has his gun out. <laughs> he's coming into the tent with his gun out. <laughs> in his hand ready to go <laughs> he just comes back over to his cot and he's getting back in bed and now the old dude sits up <laughs> he's like now it's back around to my turn he's like but i'm not gonna take it if you fools will just shit the fuck down you know go back to sleep he's like we got a day's work ahead of us tomorrow like what the fuck is going on like yeah like the two of you are back in here and now it is my turn to go back out again and check for my shit if I really was only doing that in the first place and hadn't heard what I thought was a mountain lion. Although, I mean, you know, the old dude said he's the most trustworthy and he's really just kind of been chilling back in his little cot since he came back in. Um, but did he really just start this whole thing or what's really going on? Okay, so it's the next day and um, they're showing Bogart is hitching up his little burrow and he's talking all kinds of shit to himself. And then after a little bit... Um, curtain pulls his burrow he's walking past him going down to the little trough and basically bogart is saying you know y'all better quit fucking with me um you think i'm stupid he's like this is i love this he's like you ain't gonna catch me sleeping <laughs> he's like i'm not that dumb and he's like you're gonna keep fucking around with me and then i'm gonna let you both have it he's like if you know what's good for you you won't fuck around with fred c dobbs and he's just going off, right? And so when Curtin comes over to the old man, he's like, you ought to get a load of this fool. He's like talking to himself a mile a minute. The old dude's like, yeah, there's something's eating him. He's just stirring for a fight. So um, the old dude starts heading back over toward Bogart. And he's still talking to him. He's like, no, he's standing up. He's got the burrow all tied up, un, you know, suited up and shit. And he's like, why do I have to be the one? He's still talking to himself. That has to be elected to go down today to go get provisions. Oh, we're all low on provisions today, Dobbs. Why don't you go down? He's like, why do I have to be the one to go down? And so the, um, who does the old dude think that he is bossing me around telling me that I am the one that has to go? And so the old dude says, what's that, Dobbs? And he's like, nothing. And he's like, the old dude says, well, it's a bad sign, you know, out here when a fool starts talking to himself. And, well, who else would I talk to? I certainly wouldn't talk to you or Carton. He's like, fine partners, you guys turned out to be. And then he says to the old dude, he's like, what the fuck is up, fool? Like, why do I have to be elected to go down to get the provisions today? He's like, you think I'm stupid? In the two days that I will be gone, is going to give you guys plenty of time to find where I've hidden my money. And the old dude is like, well, if you feel that way about it, then take your shit with you. And um, he's like, although, you know what I mean? Then you run the risk of getting jacked by bandits. Oh, no, hold up, hold up. The, uh, Bogart says that. He's like, oh, yeah, why? Take my shit with me so that I can be a target for the bandits. And the old dude laughs and he's like, well, if you get um, encountered by the bandits they will kill you for the shoes on your feet like of course they're gonna jack your money but they if even if you don't um take your money with you right now if you um come across some bandits you're gonna get killed anyway full so then okay then here goes Booker. he's like ah oh, so that's it he's like you're sending me out because you hope that i get caught by the bandits and he's like, that's fucked up, dude. And so the old dude is like, um, just let it go, bud. Like, that's not what's going on. Um, so the old dude just starts to walk away. And now they're showing Curtin pulling his little burrow. Okay, so he's pulling his little burrow just through their camp or whatever. And all of a sudden, we all see it at the same time. Like, it's the good timing. They did a good shot. There's this creepy as fuck looking big ass lizard that is like just crawling, obviously, I guess, through their camp and um, Curtin isn't cool with that, right? So he puts his rope down for his burrow and is heading towards this lizard, but the lizard takes off and goes underneath a rock. Like there's a little hole underneath this rock, so the lizard goes underneath the rock. So now um, Curtin goes and gets a log and he's about to pry open the rock so that he could get at the lizard now right as he's got the log underneath this rock about to you know leverage it up click he hears 
Dobbs cocking his gun on him. And he's like, exactly what I've been waiting for. He's like, I'm going to pump you full of lead from your head to your chest full if you take another move. And he's like, what the fuck? He's like, well, go, go ahead and do that. But he's like, do you mind telling me what for? He's like, don't play dumb. And he's like, oh, lo and behold, he's like, this is where your money is stashed then, huh? And he's like, oh, don't try and act dumb like you didn't know that fool. He's like, I knew this is exactly the reason why you guys are trying to send me away right now. So um, now Howard, I feel like the old name, old man's name is Howard. Um, he's on the spot too. And he's like, what's going on? And so finally, Curtin says, seems like I accidentally came across Dobbs stash and Dobbs is like accidentally why are you playing dumb and he's like why were you trying to lift up the rock right now and then Curtin says because I saw a Gila monster go underneath it go underneath the rock and Bogart's like oh my god he's like full please he's like what you're quick on your feet coming up with the right lie when you need it and so then Curtin's like all right well then I'm a liar he's like go ahead and prove me that I'm a liar then just why don't you reach your hand in there and grab your money then. Make sure your money is, is safe and good to go. I'm a liar. I didn't see a Gila monster underneath there. Go ahead and do it then. Just go grab your money. Unless you're yellow. He's like, because if you won't go and grab your money right now, then we're going to think you're yellow, right? Like, got a yellow streak in you. And he's like, yeah, go ahead and get your money full because I would hate to think that any partner of mine is yellow. He's just keeping and talking on all kinds of shit about how he's a yellow motherfucker, right? And so go ahead and get your money full. Um... And so Dobbs is thinking about him, but this fool keeps on talking shit about the Gila monster too. He's like, "I Howard, isn't this correct? I hear that um, once they latch on to you, once they bite you, they don't let go. He's like, you can kill him and cut him in half and the head will keep um, clamped onto you until sundown. And he's like, but by that time, the victim doesn't give a fuck because the poison has already killed them. <laughs> it's like... Uh, the Gila monster is not just a big ass um, benign lizard. It's poisonous too. So yeah, but he's like, go ahead, Dobbs, go ahead and grab your shit full unless you're yellow because you're just a little bitch if you won't do it. And so him and Curtin scuffle and somehow Curtin gets the gun out of Dobbs hand and tells him like I'm gonna shoot the hell out of you you know and I definitely want to do that after all the shit you've been talking all day long today and he's like don't worry Howard I got this under control because Howard had reached for his gun too but now you know Dobbs is cornered and he lost his gun so uh Curtin tells Howard to lift up the rock he does and then by that time the Gila monster is just chilling on top of Bogart's bag of money and um, they're just looking at this thing and then Curtin shoots it and it was gross they don't obviously don't show him shoot this lizard I'm thankful but the lizard plays dead because <laughs> it had a little wagging tail it's really a weird creepy looking thing it look it's got a tail like a like a rattlesnake I think that like his tail was waggling and making noise but then it just stopped. Um, so Dobbs just walks away. He's all dejected. He just walks away from the two of them and goes and sits down on another rock. And, you know, like he knows that he really did find Curtin accidentally finding his money. Okay, so the next scene is actually Curtin leading his burrow back down into town to come and get these provisions, right? It seems like this situation has become untenable between all of them and just to put it to bed, um, Curtin comes down to get these fucking supplies <laughs> instead of sending Dobbs. And I guess, too, because Dobbs' hiding spot has been discovered now, too. So, like, he's just there in the camp with the old dude and Curtin came to get the shit that they need. So, Curtin's putting his little burrow. This is back where they bought the burrows from. And he's just putting it up against the little stone wall. But you hear all of this hollering going on in Spanish. And you're, like you can hear, you can tell that. And it's kind of distracting. So it gets his attention too. And he looks over and it's basically like the whole village is gathered around a little ways up from him. So he walks over. And it's the Federales. They have two bandits. Two of those fools that shot up the train weeks ago that him and Dobbs and the old dude were on and then they shot back at those bandits it's those bandits two of them um I guess we'll find out like 
they have been kicking it in this little village for the past week or so, just shooting off their guns and, like, terrorizing this little village. All the villagers have been scared. And then the Federalists came to this village, found them, and they're about to go shoot them. So when Curtin came up to the edge of this crowd of little teeny tiny Mexicans that live in this village, okay, (laughs) he's like... Literally, though, they did a good, like, he's like a foot taller than everybody that he's standing next to. Except for one other tall dude that's, like, farther, like, 10, 15 feet away. Another white dude. Like, so now these are the only two white people in this village. Okay? And this other white dude looks over immediately, right? Like, he immediately notices Curtin because they're, like, at the same height. Everybody else is, like, a foot lower than them. So this white dude is just staring at Curtin. Curtin don't even notice him because he's just paying attention to the Federales, like, hollering at these two bandits. And then the Federales tell these two dudes to start walking, start marching, and they are coming back the way that Curtin just came into the town. So he's walking with them. And this white dude is behind him. He still hasn't seen this other white dude. So Curtin goes up to his burrow and this white dude has two burrows of his own already right next to Curtin. But Curtin didn't notice that, right? Like when he first came in. So this other dude comes up to his burrows and just starts talking to Curtin. And that kind of catches him definitely off guard because he's being spoken English too. And he he is like, oh shit, there's another English speaking person here. So anyway, this dude is the one saying, hey, the Federalis are a nice addition to this area. You know, turns out who these two bandits are, they were two that had a whole bunch of shit on them. Diamonds and pearl, you know, they stole all kinds of jewelry. And they had a train ticket showing that they were part of that train ride that got jacked a couple weeks back. And um, Curtin just says, well, where are they taking them? And he's like, to go bury them to the cemetery. <laughs> They're going to shoot him up. So Curtin really doesn't want to talk to the object, right? Like he doesn't want to talk to this fool. So he just grabs his shit off of his burrow and just tries to walk away from this dude. And he goes into the store. Just he's going to hurry up and just try and get these provisions. Get the fuck out of Dodge. But this dude <laughs> is doing too much. This dude comes into the store right behind him. By now, um... Homeboy's at the counter, he's got his little list out, and he's trying to talk his very broken Spanish to the little clerk there. And this white dude is just staring at him, standing right next to him, just staring at him really, really hard. I mean, like, well, that's a way to get knocked out. They're like, well, like, who the fuck are you? Like, why are you just, like, two feet away from me looking at my girl, like, hard? So after he's staring at him for a little bit, this fool starts talking to him, just talking all kinds of shit, right? Oh, the Federalists, they don't operate like our American police do. They don't have to, they don't have no restrictions. They'll search for these fools. They, I guarantee you they're going to find every single one of the bandits that jacked that train. And la da da da, right? Just talking his head off. He's like, what are you doing here? Like, what are you, I uh, haven't seen Americans around this spot. You're the first American I've ever seen around here. What are you doing here? <laughs> he's like I'm a hunter <laughs> he's like oh what do you hunt and he's like oh lions and tigers and bears oh my you know and he's like um where are you hunting them and he's like you know over around there and he's like um tell me since you've been here like how long have you been here and he's like oh a couple months he's like so tell me um in the time that you've been here have you seen anything that looks like pay dirt now the way they got the camera we see most of Curtin's face so we can see his eyes and every time this fool's asking him a question we see his eyes get all big but this fool is behind him we see this fool over his shoulder just still though this fool is staring at him even though he can't see his face and he's just he's like a prosecutor now it's like fool who like again you know what i mean like um who the fuck are you? Like, why are you asking all of these questions? Like, if I was Curtin, there is no way in fuck I would be answering any of these fools' questions. Like, I would cuss him out and then I might knock him out too. Like, I wouldn't be having a conversation with this fool. And so, um, Curtin's like, oh no, you know, there's absolutely no type of pay dirt going on around here. Um, nothing like that. And this fool's like, well, hey, brother, <laughs> if you don't know what it looks like, I know what it looks like. He's like, I can tell if a mountain has gold from like five miles away he's like i can tell you too if it has like an ounce of gold or if the whole mountain's like full of gold 
And he's like, so if you haven't found anything in whatever spot that you're working out of, you know, doing your little hunting, your little lions and tigers and bears and shit, um, let me come with you, fool, and I can take a look at your spot and tell you if it has any gold in it. <laughs> and now, um, this fool, uh, Curtin, he moved on the other side of this fool. Like, he is trying to avoid him, okay? So he's moved over to a different spot on the, the little counter, and he, now he's kind of looking really um, suspect at this fool. Like, now this fool, if he's just looking at this fool's eyes right now, um, the stranger knows that Curtin is finding gold wherever he's working. So then, um... This fool's just continuing to go on. He's like, yeah, dude, I can come up and I'll find, you know, anything that's going on in your spot. Anyway, then they hear two shots. Those two bandits just got killed. So this fool, he's just talking too much. Fool. Like, for real. He has not introduced himself. It's just like, fool, uh-uh. I just, you know, I, if I wouldn't be putting my hands on you already, there's no way in fuck I'd be talking to you, you know, and I'd be giving you eyes to let you know to step the fuck off and shut the f stop talking to me. But so that's like where uh, this full curtain gets in trouble. Like they should not send curtain to get the fucking provisions because he's too fucking friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I need to come in there like a bad motherfucker, like just giving people a vibe to don't fucking try and talk to you. Okay. Instead of engaging in all of this conversation with some fool that is like scoping out your scene and is going to, regardless of whether you give him an invitation to come and check out your spot for you, this motherfucker is going to be following you now. So, now he's just talking all kinds of shit about, you gotta hand it to the Mexicans, you know, they do quick justice, they have you dig your hole, they're gonna give you a cigarette, they're gonna shoot you, then they're gonna be covering up you in the dirt that you just, and this fool's like, yeah, okay, whatever, gotta give it to him. So now he's grabbed his supplies, and he's heading out to his burrow. He grabs two handfuls of his supplies, the little clerk grabs two handfuls of his supplies, but they still had a bag left. This motherfucker grabs the last bag of, of curtain shit. <laughs> it's like, are you fucking kidding me? So this fool comes out, he puts the last bag of shit on one of Curtin's burrows, and he's like, hey dude, I meant what I said about coming with you, these are my two burrows, I'm all packed up, I'm ready to go, I'm gonna come help find stuff at your spot. And Curtin's like, um, no, that's cool, dude, like, I'm gonna really try and be going back by myself. Okay, so now they cut, it's Curtin's back at their little camp, it's night, he's loading up a bowl of beans, and he's telling them, you know, Every part of the way back, I was trying to stay on hard ground so that I wasn't leaving any footprints. And he's like, and anytime I got to a high spot, I would look back and I could always see that fool was trailing. And so he's like, so I give it just a matter of time until he's here. And Bogart's like, all right, well, when he gets here, we just need to tell him to get the fuck out of here. And the old dude's like, no, that won't do any good because he'll sit around here for like an hour playing like he's innocent. Go back, get the authorities. They'll be up here. We won't be able to take our shit with us. And um, Bogart's like, well, then that leaves us no choice but to pull the trigger as soon as he gets here then. And the old dude's like, well, he could just be some, he could really just be a loser. <laughs> uh, that is out here by himself, talking too much shit to strangers, and really is just wandering through the desert by himself. And there's no crime for doing that. So like, we couldn't be justified to shoot him. And he's like, plus, if we shot him, it could get out that we shot him. And Bogart's like, well, then we don't have to shoot him. We could just get him up on one of these high rocks and push him off of the rock and the old dude's like and who's gonna do the pushing are you gonna do it Dobbs and Dobbs like we'll toss a coin for it and then he looks back over to Curtin he's like and are you sure that he was trailing you and Curtin's like yeah and he's like how do you know and he's like because he's right there right now like he's done you know following my trail and he's made it up to the camp right now <laughs> so this <laughs> Oh, so this fool's just creeping up, right? Like, he's, it's dark. Like, they show over to where supposedly he's there now, and it's like, where the fuck is he? Like, I still can't see him, but now he's coming through the dark. And so uh, Dobbs hops up, crosses over the fire, goes over and stands. You know, he don't, like, walk all the way up to the fool. Like, they let this fool walk up to their camp and shit, but he's standing at the head of their little camp. And, um... He tells that dude, he's like, come over to the fire. I guess, like, he wants to see him better in the light. And this dude is the first one that starts talking, and he's like, I I wish I had subtitles, because I can't quite see everything, or hear everything that is being said. He says something, 
But then he's like, and you know, no matter what you told me, I just couldn't resist to follow you so that I could come to this fire and just be able to sit around and talk to some Americans. And um, Bogart, he's like, well, why don't you go to a spot where like you might find some Americans that want to talk to you? And he's like, there's a little town, Durango. It's not far from here. Like, you should go there. <laughs> and that's, he was like, no, that's not what I'm after. You know, I got something more important on my mind than that. And Bogart's like, you know what? We all have something really important on our mind, too. It's like the fact that you're here full. We don't fucking want you. He's like, we don't want you for a cook. We don't want you for a dishwasher. Like, we're full up. We don't have no need for you here. He's like, so in the morning, you need to be, like, really getting your shit and getting back down to town. He's like, you need to get the fuck out of here in the morning. And so, old man starts pulling out a bowl and handing it to him, and the dude gets all excited, and Bogart's like, oh yeah, no, that's fine, sure, help yourself. He's like, tonight, we're not gonna let dude starve. He's like, yeah, tonight you're our guest, but he's like, but in the morning, you need to get the fuck out. He's like, you know, like, as in no trespassing, beware the dog, you know what I'm saying? Like, get the fuck out of here in the morning. <laughs> so then, um, Bogart winks over to Curtin. This dude is eating his beans now. And he says to Curtin, Hey, you know, while you were gone, I killed up like five different little animals. Tigers and bears and oh my and all that shit. And um, the dude, he ain't even looking at Bogart. And he just says, if you don't mind me interrupting, um, this land right here it doesn't support, you know, like that many animals that you just said that you killed. And if you were a real hunter, like in less than a week, you'd be able to kill everything that was in this area so um yeah so the old dude jumps in and he's like yeah no you're right stranger um because yeah we still don't know this fool's name uh this is bad ground for you know animals lions and tigers and bears oh my so um that's why we've decided to pack all of our shit up and we're heading out of here. Um, he's like, but it took us a little while to figure it out. You know, this is poor ground, but it took us about a week or so to figure that out. And in the full, he's just like, poor ground, you say? He's like, well, that depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> he's all for hunting game. Yeah, you're right. It is bad ground, but it's mighty good ground for something else. And the old dude is like, what's that? And he's like, gold. So now everybody's just, now everybody's busted, right? And this fool's just still eating his old beans. But then the old dude tries to play it off, so he starts laughing all hard. And he's like, gold, gold, nobody's been looking for gold here. And then um, Curtin, is like, he's like, I told you back in the town, there's no gold here. And um, that dude says, if you guys haven't found gold while you're here, then you're not as smart as you look. And then the old dude's like, gold? Well, yeah, you know, um, if you if you say so, he's like, maybe you've given us an idea, then he's like, I guess I'll have to think about it. And he's just picking up the other bowls, and he's like, I'm gonna head, you know, I'm gonna hit the hay. Think about it in, in the morning or whatever. And um, Bogart is standing behind this bowl, just looking at him like, um, I think that he's maybe starting to develop an idea of not even letting this fool live until the morning. <laughs> So, um, Curtin's like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed too. And this fool's still eating his beans. He looks over his shoulder and he sees Humphrey Bogart standing there just looking at him like a killer. And then he puts his, he don't, he's not scared. He don't rush or anything. Like he takes a couple more bites of his beans. Then he puts his little bowl near the fire and gets up. They stand there and look at each other for a second. And then this fool just walks back over to where his little burrows are and shit. Now Bogart comes into the tent and um, Curtin is saying, well, what's up with this fool? Do you think that he understands what's going on here or not? And um, the old dude's like, it's hard to tell. But he's like, even if he does, I found some subtitles finally. He's like, even if he does, he looks really harmless. And Curtin's like, well, you know, looks can be deceiving, though. And the old dude's like, you got a point there. So Bogart comes into the tent now and he's like, I'm sleeping with my boots on tonight. And he's getting his gun out. And the old dude's like, you know what? You have a point. He's like, look, you two go to sleep. I will take a couple of hours as the, you know, the watchman. And then you two can switch off and we'll just all sit here throughout the night with our guns on him because Bogart said you know he might take it into his mind to murder all of us in our sleep tonight <laughs> and that's why 
the old dude was like, you know what? You got a point. Like, look, I'll do the first shift and then we'll just take turns throughout the night. So the old dude's putting out the lamp in their little tent and he's going to sit there with a, keep a, a line on him. What's, um, okay. From Rawhide, the old dude, he's, I'm going to, I'm going to keep a line on him or something like that. Just going to keep him in his sights, right? With this gun ready to go. I uh, said, okay, so now it's the morning. <laughs> they uh, show this fool. He's out there at a little campfire, and he's pouring himself a cup of coffee out of their coffee pot. And Bogart's waking up, right? So he pokes his head out of the tent, and he sees the fool at their campfire pouring himself a cup of coffee. So he he gets on this fool's ass right away about that. He's like, fool, but he does have a point. Okay, he's like, who, where'd you get the water? He's like, I feel like he says, who gave you the water to make this coffee? <laughs> this... <laughs> um, I mean, come on, fool. Like, I think that they probably make coffee in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have the coffee. I feel like they. I feel like their normal morning routine probably is that they make a pot of coffee in the morning. But it's just as long as Bogart saw some fucking stranger that had already done that, um, he laid into this fool's ass right away. Because actually, <laughs> when Bogart started coming out. <laughs> This fool just said, good morning, friend. You know, like, he just was drinking his little cup of coffee, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and obviously he made a whole pot of it. So it's like, <laughs> he was definitely thinking that, like, everybody was just going to have their morning cup of coffee. Like, he just made the pot. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a little, um, uh, he had some nerve. But at the exact same time, like, they had the you know they made that coffee every morning. So anyway, though, Bogart got in his ass about it. And he's just like, where'd you get the water? And this fool's like, from your little water pouch. And he's like, well, um, who told you you could do that? And he's like, water is, you know, we didn't bring this water up here for you to come and make coffee with it. Okay. And um, he's like, the next time you do it, I'm going to take it out of you in little round holes. And this fool's like, wow, um, I didn't know that the water was so hard to come across up here. And Bogart's like, well, fool, now you do, okay? And I feel like then he's like, and if the next time you do it, I'm going to take the water out of you in little round holes. And this dude, um, he says the wrong thing because what we have clearly understood by this point is that Bogart's trigger is if you... Um, question his decency or you know you start to question his character he gets highly offended right like that's his trigger like he don't like anybody calling him a hog or you know suggesting that his character is such that once they had 300 ounces of gold like that he would start to be trying to figure out where everybody else's hiding spot was right like what a filthy dirty mind you he says to the old man he's getting ready to knock out um curtain when curtain called him a hog oh no well, he wasn't gonna knock him out but he wanted half of his money <laughs> so did it, this dude did i say what he says he says the wrong thing he says oh he's like i thought i was around civilized men who wouldn't begrudge me a little bit of water for some coffee and the uh, bogart's like who's not civilized and he punches as well so Bogart knocks this fool down. He gets back up and he's like, fool, I could do you too. And he's like, but and who knows who would come out on top. He's like, but for this time right now, I just took that shit from you. But let's probably don't try that again. So anyway, the old dude comes out and he's like, fool, if I were you, I would just get your shit and get the fuck out of here. And um, like, get out while you can. And this dude's like, well, the mountains and the brush are free, aren't they? And the old dude's like, yeah, do whoever's first on the spot. And this dude, he's like, yeah, well, that's the case for if you guys were actually hunters. Um, he's like, but it doesn't work that way when it comes to gold. And they say to him again, like, well, we don't know how many times we have to tell you, like, there's no gold here, though. And this dude's like, look, I don't give a fuck what you guys say. He's like, tomorrow I'm digging for gold <laughs> like i'm gonna start digging for gold now mind you this fool has two of his own burrows each one of them only have one burrow 
he has two of his own burrows and all of his own equipment. So he's telling them that he's staying and that the next day he's going to be um, setting up his own little mining operation. And this dude clarifies too. He was like, it holds like that first on the spot for hunters, but not for gold miners. He's like, unless you guys have registered your claim. And they didn't do that on purpose, right? They were like, they didn't want to go down to register that claim because they knew that as soon as they did that, fools like him would, right? They'd be chilling in the little village. They'd be overhearing everything, being nosy as hell. And then they would just start following them back up there. Or also, if they went to go try and register a claim... They might find out that some big outfit already had a claim registered there. And they, so they purposefully didn't already do that. But the way that curtain says is like, well, well, why do you think that we have a claim to register? Like, we keep on trying to tell you there's no gold here. And so now this fool, he's Bogart. They show Bogart. Bogart's looking at him again. Like he's really thinking about just killing him. And this dude, he's like, look, I know what I'm saying is really risky. And he's like, as far as I see it, you guys have three options. You can kill me, you can run me off, or you can take me in as a partner. And now he's going to, now let's just think about all the options. He's going to break it down. He's going to give them what all their options are. And so he goes into all this bullshit. You know, he's talking shit the way Curtin was talking shit to Dobbs about being yellow. Like, he's just trying to fuck with their minds. He's like, you know, if you guys try and kill me, you know... What if, like, tomorrow a dozen more guys show up and how far are you going to go killing people? Like, if you start killing people, how far are you going to go? And the old dude's like, we are going to go as far as we need to go in order to protect our interests. And he's like, well, but full of you, kill me. You ought to think about that, too, because the only way that you guys can kind of trust each other is if you all three kill me together. Because if only one of you pulls the trigger on me, then that person is going to have the other two in a position of power over them. So he's like, if you guys are going to do that, you would all three have to kill me at the same time. And he's like, all right, so you could do that. Or, you know, if you run me off of here, he's like, you know what? I'm probably going to go tell on you guys. <laughs> and so now the old dude comes down because this, this fool squatting at the fireplace, you know, the little fire hole. And the old dude comes down to his level and he tells that fool, he's like, if you go and you squeal on us, we're going to get you. He's like, we'll track you all the way down to China if we have to. This fool knows what he's talking about. And he tells them he don't even, he's not phased by what that old dude says to him. And he's like, 25% of your claim, 25% of the value of all this gold that you fools are digging up here is what I would get as a reward for squealing on you. <laughs> And he's like, and full, that's really tempting. I mean, I could, I could get by with that. And so then Curtin joins in and he's like, well, full, then um, that's probably an argument for killing you then. <laughs> so, <laughs> this dude, he's like, look, full, I don't deny it. He's like, I know you guys can kill me anytime you want to. He's like, but let's just think about that third option of bringing me in as your partner. He's like, you aren't going to lose anything. He's like, because I'm not going to ask for any share of the shit that you guys have already collected. I just want to share in this stuff going forward. And so now they're going to think about it, actually. They're like, well, what do you think? So the old dude just asks if they can have a couple minutes to talk it over privately. And dude's like, yeah, no, that's cool. I got to go look after my burrows anyway. So he just starts to walk like he walks up a hill. He goes far away from them. And now they're really thinking about it and so the old dude he's just leading he's like look letting him go down the hill again is not an option so we either have to kill him or bring him in as a um partner and bogart's like well i don't like to be taken advantage of so he's like my i'm leaning towards let's just kill him and he's he's like that fool he just told us how to do it right <laughs> he's like we just all three have to do it at the same time <laughs> And the old dude, though, he's like, well, I don't mind being taken advantage of a little bit. He's like, because he's not asking to share in our current profit. He just wants, you know, his own share going forward. And then, but Dobbs says, oh, so whoever else happens to come along, is it just come one, come all? And so then the old dude's like, well, you got a point there. But he's like, but killing. And so Bogart's like, what's up? You're not down. You can't handle it. And the old dude's like, no, I can handle it. And he's like, but let's let the majority decide. So he says to 
curtain. Why do I want to call him blanket? You know what I mean? Like curtain blanket. <laughs> he's like, what do you say? And um, he thinks about it for a second. And then he's like, he's for killing this fall. <laughs> and so they're like, okay. And they know what they got to do, right? Like they're all three going to take out their cannons. They're calling them their cannons. And they got to they fire at the same time. But you can see on the old dude's face, he's like, damn, you know, he's like, dag, you know, like he really was hoping that Curtin would have done the right thing. And so his face is just all long, but he goes into the tent to go get his little, his gun, but he's still like, he's fucked up. Like he don't want to have to kill nobody. So they're all heading up the hill now. They all have their guns. The old dude's bringing up the rear. They get up to the top. That dude's just standing there. It's like an overlook. And they all have their guns out. So he's like, oh, okay, so you guys win for option number one, I see. And then he's like, but before you do that, he's like, you probably want to take a look down the hill. So they all look. And it's kind of hard at first to see, but they see some people, like a group of people coming up the hill on horses i believe they're they're not walking and um somebody said like i can't tell what they are who they are and but right away bogart is just assuming that they're like the federales so he points his gun at this dude and he's like so you're just an informer he's like i thought that about you this whole time he's like you're just a lousy informer that's your game that's why you came up here and then that dude's like, well, you know what, unfortunately, you know, this is like our, all of our funerals. He's like, those aren't soldiers, full, those are bandits. And just like what home dude told Humphrey Bogart when they were trying to send him down to go get the provisions, they said, he told him, if you come across the bandits, dude, they're going to kill you no matter what. Like you could be taking your gold with you and they're definitely going to kill you. And now they'll have your gold too. He's like, but they would kill you for your shoes. For like that. <laughs> so that's why this dude is telling them, like, the, this is all of our funerals because those aren't the soldiers. Those are bandits. And somebody down in the village must have told them that, you know, about the gringo hunter when he came down to the village to get his little supplies talking about curtain. Right. And, you know, gave them a tip off that there's um, some hunters up here in these mountains. So they're peeping out the scene for like they're coming to come and jack you guys for whatever they can find. So the old dude's a quick thinker and he's like, we got to come up with a way to defend ourselves and quick. You know, he realizes they need to go ahead and clear out their camp because he's like, what we could try and do is just hide. But then we'd leave all of our shit behind and we're going to lose it all because if they come through and they don't find us, they will jack all of our shit. So then he ain't even talking about the gold. He's just talking about all of their supplies and stuff. So he's like, he's just telling people to do stuff. He's like, fool, you have good eyes. So you stay up here and you watch what they're doing. And then... Somebody go get all the burrows and then me and you, let's go grab all of our other supplies and throw it down in our trench. They're going to try and definitely clean out their camp, then also just try and shoot it out with these foals. So they're dousing their fire, they're taking down their tent, they're putting the burrows in little bushes and shit, and this dude hollers out and he's like, okay, hey, they're on your trail now. <laughs> like the literal trail up to their camp and um the old dude asks how many of them are there and this fool says there's about a dozen and he's like oh shit so he's like well but anyway it'll take them more than an hour to get all the way up here he, and what is this old fool always concerned about making sure everybody's on a full stomach so he's like we better all have some beans before <laughs> He's like, come on down, friend. You come and get yourself a bowl of beans, too. You know, I gotta have some beans. So, um, <laughs> the next scene is them all kind of spread out. And they all have their little bowl of beans. And they're, they're holding their guns and taking a bite of beans. I mean, really? But, yeah, the beans are, are really necessary right now. So, um, they're showing curtain. They're down in his little trench, his little hiding spot with his little bowl of beans resting on a rock. And he peeks his head out and he sees that other fool, the dude. They wave at each other, eating their little fucking beans, waiting <laughs> for the shooting to start. Okay, so this is hilarious, the fool. Okay, they show each one of these four dudes. And they really all have their bowl of beans. And they're, like, really concentrating on eating their beans, okay? 
And then, so then they finally get to the old dude, and he's got not only his beans, but a cup of coffee from the pot that this fool made, right? So, um, it, the only problem that I feel about their little situation right now is that, um, they are, like, hiding behind the rocks that are, like, forming the edge of their little campsite, okay? They could have gone, like, five feet further back into the woods. Uh, they are creeped up right on the rocks that are forming the edge of their campsite so that, um everybody's just getting down on their beans and then right in right in front of them they start to see these bandits coming up the trail and so then you know they're just they're down behind these rocks but um <laughs> they're right in the proximity of these bandits that are coming into their little campsite their actual emptied out campsite now and so curtain um, like leaves his little spot and, and, you know, crawls over to the old dude. And he says to the old dude, he's like, Hey, look at that one with the gold hat. And the old dude's like, yeah, he's from the bank, the train robbery. The, the, he's one of those bandits that we were shooting out when we were all on the train. Yep. I recognize him. And they're speaking in Spanish, right? And he's saying they think that whoever was here has left. And they're saying that they want to use this spot as their headquarters and just camp out here and then go down and raid the villages. Um, so they're all off of their horses now and they're just walking around the little campsite. But because these foals are hidden behind the rocks that are forming the perimeter of their little campsite. Um, one of them <laughs> is now walking straight to uh, Humphrey Bogart, because even though Humphrey is down behind his rock, um, I like the top of his head is completely visible as this man is standing up basically like over him. So he just is w walking straight toward Humphrey Bogart. And we're wondering, we're like, oh, is he just only coming this close, but doesn't see Humphrey Bogart? But no, no, he completely sees him. They are hiding as available as um, Carmen was in the bushes uh, in the driveway in the uh, middle of the day. <laughs> Yeah, so, the, you know, they just, I'm just saying, like, they could have been, like, five feet further back than where they're all perched up. Um, so, that, uh, this one dude that is walking straight to Humphrey Bogart calls out to the dude in the gold hat, who is, like, evidently their leader, and says, hey, hombre, or, you know, like, hey, Patron, um, look at this dude that's chilling right here. <laughs> So the, uh, the the dude in the gold hat just creeps up too. I mean, he's got to take like five steps and then he's standing over Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> and they're saying to him, hey, um, dude, you know, don't worry. Like, we're the federales. Um, you know, we're not. Ba he's, he says, like, we're not bandits. We're federales. And Bogart, he does have a shotgun. Okay. And so he's got a line on them. But... Uh, there's way more of them than him. And so uh, he just says, well, if you're the Federalist, where's your badges? And so this is what's iconic about this movie. Like, I don't know what you grew up on, but for some reason in my family, um, all of my childhood, there would just always, you know, in comedy, in, in fun, be... I don't need no stinking, you know, like you would just, if you were just fucking around and you were just talking shit, you'd say you don't need no stinking whatever, right? That comes from this movie, okay? So um, when Humphrey Bogart says to them, well, if you're the Federalis, wear your badges. And so the dude in the gold hat is like, badges? We don't have no badges. We don't got no stinking badges. I don't need to show you no stinking badges. <laughs> he starts to pull out his gun. <laughs> and Bogart tells him that he's like, he pulls out his 
rifle makes it clearer to them that at least he has a fucking rifle. He ain't just like peeked behind this little rock that's like beneath them. <laughs> he um he's got his gun on this dude and he just tells him, Well, you better not come any closer. And so though, um what's the situation? That dude told them that there were 12 of these bandits and so even though Humphrey Bogart does have a rifle pointed at this man he seems to be completely unaffected by that because um there are 11 of <laughs> he's got 11 people in his squad okay so like he's not um really worried about Bogart's rifle so he's just looking at him and he's like full like we're not trying to do you any harm and he's like you should try and be polite he's like go ahead and just give us your gun and we're gonna like we won't like fuck you up and Bogart's like no I need my gun for myself and so this dude just he's kind of getting a little bit um mad now and he's like oh he's like throw your old gun over here and we'll just pick it up and then we'll go on our own we'll leave and um bogart's like no you're gonna leave anyway um without my gun and then he he fires a shot and bogart like shoots into this dude's sombrero because he is legit wearing a sombrero okay but it's like a raggedy as fuck sombrero too like it's got like um like right in the front there's like a chunk already missing out of it but like bogart like shot into his sombrero too so i feel like he just shot another chunk out of his sombrero um it's like well really uh you would i don't know like i just would be wearing like a better i would have more pride in my sombrero than that so <laughs> <laughs> shit see i'm half mexican too like i'm half black and half mexican and so that's why i'm just saying like i would have more pride in my sombrero than that i have a picture of myself as a little toddler wearing my sombrero so it's like you know i just would have more pride in my sombrero than that like he could really just be repping more for the culture than this piece of shit very fucked up um sombrero that he has on his head so anyway um <laughs> He turns around. He's just like he just got part of his sombrero shot off, and he he don't flinch though. He's just like, all right, all right. So then, just real slowly, him and this dude, the two that were just that just found um, Bogart, they turn around and they go back over to their whole squad, and then they all huddle up. Okay, the squads huddle up, and they're talking it over. And now they show each one of these four fools that have got a line on them. And then now these two are coming back all slow. It's like, what is going on? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if they're going to shoot it out, like, what the fuck are they waiting for? Um, and, like, why are they just trying to talk to Humphrey Bogart if they think, like, he's the... I feel like, you know what they're probably going to come back and ask him is if he has backup. Okay, so these fools come back to two. And the little, the man with the gold sombrero, right? He's the gold hat. He's the leader. He's the one doing all the talking. And he's like, hey, hombre, you got the wrong idea. Like, we're not trying to just take a gun for nothing. Like, um, we want to, we want to buy it from you. And he's like, look, I have this gold watch on a gold chain. And it's worth, like, at least 200 pesos. And so he's like, that's what we want to give you for your gun right now. So just go ahead and give us your gun and you can take this gold watch worth 200 pesos. And Bogart's like, no, you keep your gun, or you keep your watch, and I'm gonna keep my gun. And so now this dude's pissed off, and he's like, oh, we won't get it. You think we won't get it? He's like, I'll show you. And he goes to reach for his little pistol. He's got just a pistol on Bogart's shotgun. And so then just that quick, Bogart shoots the um, watch. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that, because the other dude, the other bandit, the one that first saw Bogart is the one that's holding up the um, the watch, just you know, putting it on display, letting them see it. And like Vanna White or um, one of Barker's beauties, you know, what I'm saying, just displaying the watch. And so he's like even twirling it around. And Bogart is obviously good enough of a shot because he shoots the face of that watch. And this dude is just holding it like he can't believe it. And actually, that happened so quick. And everybody got flustered by that. But who actually just fired that shot and shot the watch was the old dude. Because he's like the person over from Bogart. He's Bogart's closest neighbor. 
And so kind of from a different angle, even than where Bogart is, that gun, just, the watch just got shot. And that did, that flustered those fools because they, they couldn't believe that, you know, the face of this watch just got shot. So they take off, they head back down to their um, little squad and they're like, hola, you know, no, I don't, it sounds like they're saying hola, but that's, they wouldn't be saying that, but they're just like, whatever they're saying in Spanish, right? <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. So they're just like, um, you know, like bombinos, like, let's get the hell out of Dodge. So they start to disperse, but they don't go very far. And then the next thing you know, like, they've all just turned around and they start shooting toward Bogart. And like, they don't know who else is there, right? But they obviously somebody else is. I think like they were able to figure out that Bogart has some backup. So they just... It's weird, like, those two run back down to the squad and they're like, let's go, let's go. But then, right away, everybody just starts shooting. Okay, so now everybody's just shooting it out. And it actually turns out that Bogart is not a very good shot. Because <laughs> this dude on their side, the bandit side, is, like, crawling right in front of... I'm talking about, like, all Bogart would have to do is kind of just put his gun down and sh fucking pull the trigger and he does that but he misses um <laughs> that particular dude you know like i don't know he's shooting a lot but i don't know if he's making any contact okay so but the old dude he's the one that's the master shooter he's the sharpshooter um because he got like two or three people they showed him he would just take a little bit of time and he's just got a little um pistol too his, this pistol that they've all had you know as they're in the tent just keeping their pistols drawn on each other so the old dude though like they show him get about three people and he just aims he just takes his time he closes one eye pulls the trigger he's getting that full he's getting the so the old dude is like handling his share of what needs to happen but then um you know and they show everybody taking some shots all four of them taking shots including the dude that you know was trying to just do way too much to bust in on their little scene and um so everybody's shooting and then all of a sudden it just gets quiet like because what we these bandits are pulling back into the forest on the perimeter of their little campsite right so they they're withdrawing into the forest to make it harder for them to just be getting shot and then all of a sudden it just everybody stops shooting and so bogart like crawls over to the old dude and asks if anybody got hurt he's like no we're all good and um he's like looks like we won that round um but he don't think that they're done he's bogart's like you think they've left and the old dude's like oh hell no and he's like as long as now they know too that there's only four guns on them he's like they're gonna be more determined than ever he's like all we can do is just wait for them and so um curtain has crawled over to them now too and they're just all kind of reloading talking it out and then um the old dude hollers out he's like oh cody now, mind you I did miss this all the way back in the little town when that fool was being so talkative. He did introduce himself to Curtin and he said his name was Cody and that he was from Texas. Okay. I didn't catch that. Um, but so this fool's name is Cody. So the old dude, he's like, Oh, Cody, are you okay? And he don't answer. Um, so Curtin starts to crawl back over toward his own spot. And then Cody was next to him. So he's starting to crawl back over to his own spot and now they start shooting again and like laying it out. Like they're really, really, really shooting. So um, Curtin's going to be lucky if he makes it back over to his spot. So he makes it over to Cody. Cody is dead. He grabs his bullets and his gun and he's basically almost like standing up and running back over and it's like how did he not get shot okay because they show bullets like coming all around him and there's 12 guns on him and he somehow doesn't get shot though and he makes his way back over to the old dude and, and dobbs and tells them that that fool is dead and you know but he has his gun and so dobbs is just like oh shit there's one less gun and but then all of a sudden again the shooting stops and they are just hearing chopping going on and they're like what the fuck and so dobbs dobbs is like they're building wood for like a campfire getting wood for a campfire or something like what the fuck 
And the old dude is like, no, and if they're doing what I think, we're in, we're in trouble. He's like, they're going to start building barricades, and then they'll just be, like, doing, like, in the cartoons, where they're going to put a little barricade in front of themselves, and then they'll just be moving back and forth with the barricade. <laughs> you know, when people just creep into the bushes, but then they pick up the bush, and they just creep along inside of the bush? <laughs> I don't know, because the old dude's like, if they're doing what I think they're doing, then we're fucked. And he says that they're about to start building. <laughs> oh, shit. These little mobile barricades like that. I don't, I don't understand why that's more of a problem than... <laughs> Oh, but he was like, they're fucked if they're about to be doing that. So, um, yeah. So, um, the old dude is just telling them, uh, like, he would trade in his whole portion of this gold mine if right now he could have, like, four grenades. <laughs> so then he tells them, he's like, so you guys better get back to your spots. Okay, so they're about to split up, but then they hear that wood chopping stop, and then they're just wondering why and then you hear somebody saying bombinos muchachos and then you hear their little horse hooves like riding away and um bogart's like hey they're getting out of here and why and they don't understand why all of a sudden they're just running away and dobbs gets up and the other dude uh curtain says wait a minute that could be a trick don't go dobbs that could be a trick to lure us out and the old dude's like no they're not good enough actors to be trying to pull a trick like this i think they really are running away so dobbs does get up and he starts to run up a hill basically probably where that other dude had been standing in the beginning to see them coming up and so he's like totally standing up on the top of this hill and he calls down to them he's like hey partners come up here he's like this is something to see if there ever was so now they're running up and it's going to turn out to be the actual federales are on the site and they're gonna just like start shooting them these bandits like down the hill further down the, just getting them out of the scene okay so the federales are chasing off the bandits and bogart's all yay federales i love you get them chew them up and don't even spit them out just swallow them like he's all excited that the federales are making them leave so then the old dude remembers the dead guy and it's like i wonder who he was so they go over and they pull out his wallet and find a letter turns out he was married had a little kid um curtain starts to read the letter turns out this fool has a farm in texas a fruit farm so his wife is writing him a little letter talking about how you know she misses him and all of these long separations all the time and how the little boy misses him too and you know that this fool had told her this was the last time that he was going out on a little gold hunt and if he didn't find gold this time that he would finally stay his ass at home instead of leaving them for like years at a time <laughs> and she's like Oh, yay, I'm so glad about that because our little farm is in bloom right now and, you know, all the people are looking forward to a good crop and a good harvest and I hope you're back in time for the harvest and, you know, I hope that you find some gold this time because luck needs to be shining down on you finally and she's like, but even if it doesn't, you know, you and I already found life's greatest treasure, so bring your ass home, like, ASAP. So... Um, they look at her picture too. Like he's got a picture of her in his wallet. I was like in 19, I was now somehow I was feeling like this was in the 1800s, but no, it was in 1925, right? So yeah, he could have a photo of her and they go ahead and you could tell like curtains getting all attached to this lady just through her letter. And he's thinking about her little fruit farm and shed. So they go ahead and fold everything back up and Bogart's like, well, I guess we just need to dig a hole for him. So they don't show that. But now the next scene is their, um, at their little uh, trough for their gold. So yeah, they're at their little trough and they all have their little tray. And uh, I guess they take each tray and they dump it into a little tin can. And so Bogart grabs the can after they've dumped in the last little bit of their tray. And he says, this isn't as good as it has been. It's not even as good as it was yesterday. And the old dude's like, yeah, and if you 
want to know what I think, it's going to get even worse from here on out. He's like, I feel like we've taken all of the gold that this mountain has to give. And, um, you know, it's like, we're not going to get any more. It is just going to, the supply is going to keep dwindling down. So, um, Bogart asks, he's like, how much do you think that we have right now? And the old dude's like, well, not as much as, you know, you fools wanted to get. He's like, but we probably have 35,000 a piece. And now all of a sudden here goes Bogart. He's like, you know what? I'm ready to go. He's like, let's just pack everything up and head back down. He's like, this is good enough for me. Cause it, now look, check him out. He's like, cause I don't want to keep that dame waiting, whoever she is. So he's talking about, um, Cody's wife. Like just, just because they read that letter, like now everybody who's planning to go to Texas to be her man now, but definitely Bogart thinks like he's the first one in line for that. So he, he wants to pack up Rush out cause he wants to go get this, man's widow the old dude is like that's cool or whatever but it's gonna take us about a week to put the mountain back in shape and bogart's like what are you talking about and the dude's like well we hurt this mountain you know what i mean and it's just a, a show of respect for nature and shit full like we need to put her back in shape to look somewhat like she did before we came and got all up into this and um curtains looking he's like well you're talking about this like it's an actual woman and um well, the old dude's like, look, if you don't, if you fools don't want to help me, I'm going to stay here and do it myself. And Bogart says, well, this mountain has been better to me than any bitch that I've ever dealt with. And so he's like, Did, keep your shirt on, fool. He's like, I'm going to stay and help. He's like, I, I'm down to, you know, show some respect to the mountain or whatever. So <laughs> now it's just showing all of their little bags, their little pouches of gold, right? Like they're working to put the mountain back together and pack up all of their shit. And so they're loading up all of their shit. They each load up their little burrow and the old dude says, yeah, everybody better just treat their burrow as their own responsibility. You know what I mean? Like just from here on out, your shit is your responsibility. And so then he waves at the mountain, bye mountain. And then Bogart says, bye mountain. And thank you. And the old last dude, thanks mountain. They all say goodbye to the mountain and they show the mountain, um, I don't see how it looks jacked up. So, you know, I guess they put the mountain back together. Okay, so the next scene now, it's that night, you know, they've come down the mountain. They've made a little campsite again, though. And um, the old dude's just getting it on his harmonica, right? Just serenading them. And um, Curtin says that he's been thinking about Cody's widow and he feels like they need to give her and the kid a fourth of all of the money between all of them. He's like, treat her just like she was our partner from the very beginning. And Bogart's like, what, you mean give her a quarter of all of our shit right now? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, why? Because that fool um, told us that the bandits were coming, you know what I mean? Like, we wouldn't even have anything. We wouldn't be coming down off of this mountain right now if it hadn't have been for him. And... Curtin says, right, Howard. Isn't that right, Howard? And the old dude's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> is what he says. He's like, the buzzards would have gotten fat off of us, that's for sure. And he's like, um, you know, half of what I have right now is more than I need for the rest of my life. So he's like, quarter? He's like, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And Bogart's like, you two must have been, you know, born in like the Holy Rollers meetings or whatever. Like, you are very Christian, right? Like, you got morals. Um, but he was like, you know what, as far as that dude, like any one of us could have gotten shot like that. So it was just his bad luck and our good luck. So he's not giving any of his money. And, um, Curtin's like, well, whatever you guys do, I'm keeping, I'm going to give a quarter of mine. And so then all of a sudden we see, um, a fucking, what do they call it? A scathe or whatever. You know, it's like a hooked knife. We, we see that in the screen like at the edge of their little camp, right? Like we see the old dudes laying down on his back, playing his harmonica again. And these two are talking and we just see this hooked knife in at the edge of their little camp. And then all of a sudden the old dude sees it and he says to them, we're not alone. We got company. And Bogart jumps up. He's ready to jump up. But the old dude tells him, he's like, dude, calm down. Just, just wait a second. So now these four little, um, Mexican men are standing there. Um, but they're not the bandits. Um, they just, they're quiet. They're silent. You know, they haven't said anything and they're not coming up all threatening or anything. So they just stand there and then, you know, like we see that first dude and then the others come up next to him and 
He just, the first dude says, buenos nochos, <laughs> noches, whatever. And um, he says a couple more things in Spanish to the dude. The old dude understand. He's like fluent in Spanish. So he completely understands what is being said to him. And um, he tells Curtin to offer those dudes some coffee. So at first, Curtin doesn't do anything. And they're all just standing there. The four little Mexican dudes are just standing there. They're not sitting down doing anything and finally Curtin hands them some coffee then um he also the old dude says hand them some tobacco and so Curtin does that too he hands them like the pouch of tobacco and then one of them comes over to the old dude and hands the, him a pouch of tobacco old dude takes some hands it to Bogart tells him take some and say thank you and so Bogart's like we give them our tobacco they give us theirs. Why doesn't everybody just smoke their own and call it a day? And he's like, well, just take some and say thank you. <laughs> so, um, everybody starts twisting up a joint, you know, but it's not, it's just, it's tobacco, but they roll it up. So it's, they make little joints. And he says, the old dude's like, you know, they're gonna, they need something. They're gonna, ask for something they're after something but it's going to take them a while to get to the point he's like it's considered rude among indians and so when you think about it, that's who these are these are indigenous little mexican people which you know are actually you know just indigenous native mexicans right so i'm surprised that they speak spanish okay but yeah they're coming from whatever little um village tribe right that they're from and so that's why he said Indians, because, you know, they're like native, they're indigenous. And he just said, like, it's rude in their culture for them to just sit down and get straight to the point of, like, why they're here to ask us for something. Like, he, the old dude feels like they need some help or something. Um, but he's like, it's going to take them a little while to get to the point. So they just show, everybody's just slowly lighting up their cigarettes. Okay, let me say it right. And um, they're going to sit there and smoke for a little bit. And then they'll get to the point of what they need. And I actually could understand most of what this dude said to him in Spanish. So if I, it doesn't take long. They they all just light up their cigarettes. And then the first dude stands up and he says, I, I, like, I really could almost understand this. He said his son fell into the water and they fished him out. Um, and he's not dead. He just won't come to. And they need some help please. So that's what the old dude tells the other two. And he's like, um, I'll go help. He's like, I'm going to go take a look. Uh, and he's like, I'll be back probably before the morning. And he's walking across their little fire and going to go through the woods with these four. And he looks back over at Curtin and Dobbs and tells them to watch his goods. So, okay. Now this is a cute little scene. It's very precious. Right, so this old dude, he goes into their little village and all of the villages around the little boy, right? Like they have him on almost like a little altar, you know what I'm saying? And they're all praying for it. You can tell like everybody is praying for this little boy. So the old dude just comes up to him and he takes his arms and he starts pumping him like a pump, right? Like he just takes both. Of this little boy has to be maybe four. Okay, he's so cute and little. So the dude is taking his little wrists and just brings them down and takes them up over his head. So he's just like pumping him like a little pump and um, just trying to get him to come to. And he can tell that the little boy is not dead. Um, but, you know, he's just, I feel like that maybe he taps him on the cheek and um, he keeps putting his head down to his chest and keeps pumping him. And then all of a sudden the little boy comes to him. And so now because this old dude was able to revive the little boy, like this village is regarding him as a medicine man. And uh, like he's very revered. So the dude, um, it was a really sweet scene. Like you would, you would enjoy this scene to watch this movie. Um, he's heading through the crowd and it's a whole village, dude. Like it's a little town and he's just got to walk through like a lot of people. But the, it's all really quiet when he's leaving because everybody's just doing like the... I am not, cap is it Hail Mary? You know, they're doing the little three tap thing. I have, is that a Hail, I have no idea what it is, but you know, they do that. And, um, he's just walking back out of their little village. And so now the next scene, now they're not up on that mountain and shit. Like they're way far away from the mountain. They're just back through the desert with their supplies and shit. And they're each one responsible for their gold. 
And the dude is just telling them, you know, what he did. He's, you know, like he had to give him mouth to mouth and um, had some Boy Scout tricks that he knew. <laughs> and he's just telling them, you know, it's like he wasn't, um, yeah, it, you know, he hadn't drowned, like, because he, he hadn't swallowed like a whole bunch of water. He wasn't, he didn't like spit out a whole bunch of water when he woke up. Um, he's like, I think he was just stunned and, you know, maybe knocked out when he fell into the water or whatever. But yeah, he's explaining how he was able to bring the little boy back to Okay, so then all of a sudden they hear horses rushing up behind them. They're all turning around, ready to go with their guns. And quickly, though, they're at ease because it's those people from the village, the dudes that came in. Well, actually more than just those four that first came, like more of them, but those villagers. And they're speaking in Spanish again. They're letting the old dude know that it's their obligation, like to the saints and stuff, that they have to um, have this, have them come back to the village for a week um as their guests and i can tell the old dude is telling them you know like thank you for that invitation but i gotta get to durango in two days you know so i can't come with you and they insist right like they explain no you know you gotta come or else all the saints are gonna be angry at us so humphrey bogart starts to laugh and the old dude's like, wait, don't laugh, though, because this is a serious issue for them. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to actually, like, they're not playing. Like, they will use force on us to go back if necessary. And Bogart's like, well, I'll take care of this. So he just, right, he can't really speak much Spanish. But he goes up to him, he's like, yo, hombre, you know, no, no. You know? <laughs> and he's just using his hands like, no. And, um, all of a sudden, and I feel like he goes to reach for his gun too. And then all of them pull out their little, I guess, is it called a scathe? Their little hooked knives. And there's way more of them though than these three. So the old dude's like, hold on guys, you know, put your guns away. You're not gonna be able to fight your way out of this. Like he realizes now that he's, he's just going to go with them. He ain't going to fight it. And I feel like these, the little villagers also break it down. They're like, we don't give a fuck about you two. It's just the old dude. Like, you, you two motherfuckers didn't do anything. <laughs> it's just the old dude that we need. So all of a sudden, though, um, Bogart, he likes it. He's like, oh, they don't give a fuck about us. It's just you. And he's like, all right, then go have a couple days vacation with them and then just come to Durango. And the dude's like, well, what about all my stuff, though? And Curtin's like, take it with you. And, but then Dobbs is like, nah, if he, they, if he takes all that shit with him, they might forget that he's his, you know, their honored guest and he, they might kill him for his shit. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, he's like, well, then what am I supposed to do with it? Then just dump it out here on the ground. And I feel like Curtin is the one that's like, we'll take it with us to Durango and we'll just wait for you there. And the old dude's like, yeah, I guess that's probably the only solution then, huh? So he started to walk away and Bogart's, you know, talking about, well, you know, my Sunday school teacher, he's, no, first he's like, um, I, you'll think twice the next time you want to do a good deed, huh? <laughs> like, of course he would say something like that, right? <laughs> And then he's like, yeah, my Sunday school teacher used to say, you know, you got to be able to handle disappointments in life. Um, and he's like, and be careful when you get over there, too, because I heard that those um, the Indian women, you know, are really smart. And he's like, they might one of them might decide to marry him. And then the fool turns around because he's already walking away with them. And he turns around and he's like, hey, I might just do that, though. Like, find me a good looking squaw and marry her. He's like, they're easy to entertain. They're cheap to keep. <laughs> They don't nag at you. <laughs> um, so he's just heading off with them and real happy. All of his, like real happy Dobbs is like, all right, well, you know, have a great time. We'll see you in Durango. And it's just like, um, what's going on on his part, right? Okay, so now it shows these two fools by themselves in the middle of the desert again. And it's, you know, it's, let me give you the, it's, there's all kinds of cacti and shit. Like, it's very, um, filled with vegetation and shit, just dried out vegetation. It's not like the Sahara Desert where there's no, where it's just sand. Um, it's very cactusy, but you can tell, like, it's hot as hell. So, 
finally um and actually it looks like they each have two burrows a piece now because there's way the fuck more burrows than there were in the beginning from what i recall anyway like i thought that they each just only had one burrow a piece but now there looks like there's about six of them so he gets to a little rock and sits down and takes some water and takes a big old hard swig but then spits out the water and then just puts the little water pouch down at his feet so then you know a couple seconds later here comes curtain finds another rock across from him and just says has to say has to say to bogart he's like hey you know they get his attention and bogart looks over at him with a big old attitude and curtain just points to the water pouch like you know like toss it to me full but and i don't think that he wanted him to toss it to him because bogart does just take it and just tosses it to him all with a major attitude to where curtain's just looking at him like full what the fuck is your problem right and then here goes bogart he's gonna start going off and he's just talking to it because all of a sudden hold on before he starts to go off the burrows just start to make noise they're just hee-hawing right the way that a burrow will and Bogart's got a stick, a walking stick in his hand, and he puts a stick up in the air, and he's getting ready to hit at one of the, the burrows, and he just slams, um, but he's like, isn't it all his, his fucking burrows that are, like, wandering off of the trail, and they'll bump their shit all over everything? He's like, I wish they would bump their asses off of a 2,000-foot gorge. He's like, what the fuck were you thinking about when you told that fool that we would carry his shit for him? He, as if he couldn't handle it on his own, he knew what he was doing when he was pawning his shit off on us um and curtain's just sitting there like this head down like he's not like he's taking shame for this shit but he don't give a fuck right <laughs> he's just telling him he's like well what the what the good is it to be talking shit about the old man right now he's like and just you need to be like saving your energy for the next like 45 miles that we have to go <laughs> on this trail you know what i'm saying like you need to really just pick your battles right now. And um, Bogart, he's, Bogart is pissed off. Okay, He's as mad as he was when they were trying to send him to go get the provisions. And he was talking all that shit to himself, right? He was amping himself up. He's amped up like that right now. And so he says to Curtin that he's decided he's staying right where he is right there for the rest of the night. He's making camp right there. And... um he tells that fool he's like if you want to keep on you take your ass on i don't give a fuck but he's like you take his burrows with you if that's what you're gonna do and curtain's looking at him and he's like it's early and it is it's early it's nowhere near um sunset okay like it's three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> he's telling this fool he's like fool it's all early it's like still the middle of the day he's like if we could make like another five miles before it gets to be dark so like why are we gonna just stop right here in this hot ass sun where there is no shade and just stop right now like you know they gotta get to that town regardless right so why wouldn't they just make the progress toward it and so bogart comes up as full and it's just they use the wrong words with each other right it's just the slight it's just the word choice that triggers these two so bogart says to him he's like well nobody ordered you to stay here with me he's like you i don't give a fuck what you do fool he's like go make 20 more miles today do you you know what i mean like i am not telling you what to do and so then okay that's all it took though because now curtain's standing up again he's all now he's off of his rocker too and he's all ordered he's all who's ordering me to do anything and now he's standing up to bogart <laughs> <laughs> so when bogart stands up to him um he says to curtain he's like well actually you're the one talking like you're the boss dude he's like and let's hear you say it so they're like standing eye to eye and curtain's like calming down and he's like all right all right now i if you can't go any further then that's fine we'll stay here and uh now bogart's all offended and he's like oh well, who's saying i can't go any further you know he feels like he's been challenged now and yeah just because his little man had got challenged like that now bogart's telling him i can go four times as far as you can any day you know i just don't fucking feel like it right now so again it's exactly what i just said um curtain's backing down because he's just like what's the use of hollering here in this heat like this and he's just like look we committed to it like we we've started out on something that we have to finish it's like we're gonna have to get to that fucking town for like we're it's not an option for us to just like oh we're done right here so at some point we're gonna have to keep him moving from here again but he's like for right now that's fine we'll just camp right here 
right now. Okay, so now it is nighttime. They're just chilling right there. They don't have a fire going or anything, and they're just all... Bogart's, like, in the fetal position, but just, like, not on the ground, you know, but he's all hunched up like that, and um, Curtin's just sitting up, up against a rock, and he's saying, I wonder what that old dude's doing right now, and Bogart's, like, having, you know, turkey dinner and a bottle of tequila, <laughs> Um, the old, then Curtin, you know, Curtin's always civil, right? And he can always bring it back to civilization. So he's saying, you know, um, today was just a bad day, you know, cause it was our first day on this whole thing being completely on our own. And he's like, you know, once we get the hang of this, it's not going to be so hard as today was. So, um, Dobbs just says, how far do you think it is to the railroad? Now let's think about the railroad. That's where they very first started this journey, right? Like, and the Dodd Fole was telling them though, once they got to that railroad, that they were going to have to go like 60 miles away from the railroad to a location where nobody, you know, is, is chilling. And so they're on their way back to that railroad. So he's asking, how far do you think we are from that? And um, the dude first says, well, you know, we're not as far as it takes for the birds to fly. And Bogart's like, well, it's, we're not birds, though. So he's like, all right, well, he's like, I figure it takes two days from here to get to the high pass and then three days from there to the railroad. Um, you know, and that's just like as if we have no weather troubles. We don't hit that little dust storm that almost blew us away. At first. You know, like if, if we don't run into shit like that, probably like five more days, right? Like, they, um, I'm telling you, they probably have gone 60 miles by foot. So, all of a sudden, like, let's just get a line on how Bogart is, is looking right now, though. He's got a little afro. Like, he legitimately has, like, a little white person afro, okay? Like, a little 1925. <laughs> Actually, like, from the beginning of this movie, when they cut that fool's hair, when his hair was cut just to his ears... <laughs> he now legitimately he has like a little white person afro full like he is rocking a little fro um it is like fluffed out too it's like he has a little pick like he picked it all out it's all even <laughs> but he has an afro now okay <laughs> he starts just laughing um hysterically and rocking back and forth <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, the other dude is looking at him like really um, concerned. Okay. And so he's just like, well, what's your joke? Like, are you going to let me in on it? And he don't stop laughing for a little bit. And he, the dude just really kind of has to keep on saying, like, Fuller, are you going to tell me, like, what's so funny? Because, you know, it's a little disturbing um, the way you're just rocking and laughing all hard like this without, I mean, because he's, like, really laughing hard. And so then finally he does. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll tell you. And he's like, what a jackass that old dude was to leave all of his shit with us, huh? And he's like um making us do all of his work for him but he's like in the end he just fucked himself because he's like this all of his shit is ours now <laughs> and so this the curtain dude is just trying to figure him out like they both have full beards and shit now too like so bogart has a full beard in his little afro and uh curtain's hair is curly it's more like bogart i watch this movie well and you tell me that he doesn't have an afro right here so <laughs> The other dude's hair is just really thick and curly, but his is all fluffed out too. But it's Bogart's rocking and out. Like he has hairspray that's got it in, in place and shit. <laughs> it's, I love this part of the movie. It's just, it's getting to be straight comedy now, okay? <laughs> just for looking at this full, okay? And so. <laughs> It's, um, Curtin is getting very concerned because he's like, what are you talking about? Like all of his shit is ours. And he's, Bogart's like, full wig, come on, get with the times. Where'd you grow up? And he's like, what, like, if I got to break it down, if I got to tell a dumbass like you, I'm telling you that like all of his shit is ours. Like we won't go to Durango. Like we're not going to meet him there. Like we'll just keep going north. And, you know, I feel like he's going to try and catch this railroad at a different spot or something. And, um the fool's money is theirs and um curtain you can tell that he's just he's a decent human being right so he's like you don't mean what you're saying right like you don't you're telling me these things but you don't mean it right and 
Dobbs. He's like, Fred C. Dobbs, don't say nothing that he don't mean. And uh, Curtin's like, well, I'm letting you know, as long as I'm here and can do anything about it, you're not going to touch a grain of the old man's like gold sand. And um, Dobbs right away, he's like, no, I know exactly what you mean. What you want to do is you're going to take all of his shit for yourself and then you're cutting me out of Jack and him. <laughs> and Dobbs is like, well, you're lost. You're gone, dude. Like, that, no, that is not what I'm talking about. And it's really interesting what's going on between these two right now. This is actually kind as I'm watching this and how crazy that Humphrey Bogart looks right now. I'm, he looks crazy because of his head. <laughs> His eyes are not helping him. Uh, he looks insane, okay? And so, Curtin is really... It, this is a situation in life where if it was just you and another person out the thick in the middle of the fuck of the desert at night, and one of you is going off of your rocker and wants to do evil, and Curtin right here is having to be a um, moralistic person who is standing up to evil for the right thing and so you know he is saying no Dobbs I'm on the level for the old man just the same way that I would be for you if you weren't here right now and Dobbs right now so I've paused and Dobbs is looking at him in his little fetal position but his eyes look like murder and so he's just saying come on get with it you're sounding like a square out here in the middle of this wilderness and it's like that it, that's a lesson for life it's like it doesn't matter if you're all the way out in the middle of the wilderness like curtain is showing us that you need to do the right thing full like oh now you got license to just do all of this evil shit that dobbs is trying to be about and curtain though is out there alone with some crazy this full he's gone crazy now um this lunatic right and but he's really having to just say the right thing to do like no this is the right way that we need to do this right now and uh Dobbs had just said to you know get off of your soapbox like you sound like a square out here in the middle of this wilderness like come on get with it wanna jack him with me you know and it's like no dude like i can still know the difference between right and wrong even though we're out here in the middle of nowhere alone and so though now bogart he's he's uh, he's insane okay so he's like um and anyway i've had my suspicions about you for a long time and now i can see i'm right on track about you he's like i've been feeling this coming from you this vibe coming from you for a long time you've been waiting to be out here alone with me in the middle of the bush like this and you've been waiting for an opportunity to bump me off so that now you would be out here alone with all three of the shares of this gold and you know like that's what you're all about for like you rep for that lifestyle like you can't wait to kill me and then he's like and then you know you just take all our shit to durango and then you'd be laughing it up like how you jacked me and the old man and so um curtain is moving toward bogart but i feel like it looked like he was only like rolling onto his knees i feel like he was more on his haunches this whole time and he was just kind of moving forward to get on his knees and then and try and stand up so that's all he wasn't reaching for his gun or anything like that he was just kind of moving a little bit toward bogart bogart has taken that as a threat grabbed his gun has it on him tells him take another move and i'm gonna blow your head right off so now bogart is standing up with his gun on him so um bogart says to him you know like i have you figured out now and all of your little sunday school talk about doing the right thing right but he's like then he's just telling him to stand up so that he can take it like a man and um somehow his gun goes off because oh you know i feel like just that quick curtain lunges forward and grabs his legs and i feel like that's what makes his gun go off and then they're struggling for the gun and curtain's able to get it away from him though and so now he has bogart's gun and his gun and he's pointing two guns onto bogart and he's just told him um you know tables have turned now full um basically because i have two guns on you okay and bogart's like yeah i can see you know <laughs> And, um, Bogart is, I mean, he's lost his fucking mind. So he's like, yeah, I can see. And he's actually like trying to move toward Curtin. Like he's going to try and grab Curtin's ankles or something. But Curtin, I feel like he has to kind of cock the gun. <laughs> he's like, look, he's like, I, you got me all wrong. And so he is really, 
even though he's got to have these two guns on this fool, he's still going to be trying to speak to him coherently. And I'm going to tell you exactly what he says, because I love, like, he really is almost talking like Sunday school compared to this demon that Bogart has turned into. But he says, not for a moment did I ever intend to rob you or do you any harm, right? I mean, don't you feel like that's kind of speaking almost biblically, you know? It's like he's very patiently, calmly, rationally speaking to this fool and just telling him in a a decent human being type of way what he, where he's coming from. And like, fool, you have lost your mind and you are actually projecting onto me right now because like everything that you're about is all of this evil that you're saying that I'm trying to do to you. That's not what's going on. Like, it, I'm not coming from the place that you are. And so then he repeats to him. He's like, fool, I'm going to tell you again, like, I would stand up for you the same way that I'm standing up for the old man right now. Like, it's just, that's who I am. This is the person that I am. And so Bogart's like, all right, well, if you really mean that, then give me back my gun. And this fool is like, oh, he click, pulls back the latch, lets those bullets empty out, puts the shit back together, and hands it his gun. <laughs> and uh, Bogart's like, oh, yeah, my pal, my buddy. So, um, the yeah, curtain brings up a great point. And I think, like, maybe this conversation should have gone here about 10 minutes ago. And so he just, you know, given kind of where everything is right now, how everything is going really to the left-hand side, um, out of nowhere, don't you think that it's probably best if we go ahead and split up? And he's like, tomorrow, and if maybe even not that long, like, tonight? <laughs> and so Bogart's like, oh, yeah, you would love that, wouldn't you? And that's going to be great for you. And Curtin's like, well, why is it more to my advantage than yours? And Bogart's like, so you can sneak up on me in the night and, and shoot me out, take me out from behind. And, um, like Curtin is, he cannot, he can't ration with a fool like this. So he's like, you know what? Well, fine. Let me go first. And then you can be behind me. <laughs> but even that doesn't work for Bogart right away. He's like, okay, so you go first so you can wait on the trail and then you am but it's like okay he's like dude um why wouldn't i just fuck you up right now if that's what i was gonna do i have the gun with the bullets you know what i'm saying like why don't you understand that like i'm not trying to kill you fool <laughs> oh my gosh yeah he's he's insane at this point like it's just insanity so bogart says to him um i'll tell you why you wouldn't do it because you're yellow. You don't have what it takes to um, kill me while I'm looking you straight in the eye. Now he lunges towards him and he's got his eyes all bulged out. Like, you can't do it when I'm looking you straight in the eye looking at you crazy as hell right now like this. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Dobbs understands, not Dobbs, uh, Carton understands, like, what is going, like, this is an untenable situation. So he says to him, um, well, if you are so insane like this, like, there's nothing that I can do but tie your ass up every night. And now Bogart, he just goes back to this hysterical laughing. He's just laughing his ass off with his little afro. I'm, you have got to see this movie to see it at this part. I'm at an hour and, like, 34 minutes. Full <laughs> is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and his crazy beard and I mean he is insane right now <laughs> and so he's just cracking up right and then he says laughing and now he says to um Curtin he's like I'll tell you he's like I'll tell you what I'm gonna make you a little bit and I don't know why he comes up with these numbers oh yes he does um because the old dude had told them that he estimated that each one of them have $35,000 a piece okay so he does this math really quick in his head and I actually think that Bogart was like a, a numbers man like this really quick I feel like there's been some other movies that I've seen him in where he spits out numbers really fast and hard like this but okay so just quickly I saw a documentary on Humphrey Bogart once before and it's very interesting his real life background he was like an aristocrat like he came from like a rich family in the northeast and like grew up in private schools and shit and had like all of the advantages in life like his family was very well to do but when you just kind of see these characters that he always plays like you wouldn't necessarily understand that about his real life like he actually grew up very polished and very just the young gentleman and shit but like who he is right now he's like an amazing actor so anyway he just says all right i'll bet you i'll just give you a little bit he's like what 
35 times 3 is 105. And like, I couldn't do that math in my head that quickly. But he did it that quick. 35 times 3 is 105. He's like, I bet you $105,000 that you'll fall asleep before I do. And he's his eyes are bulging out of his head. And he's just staring at this full. <laughs> Well, this, it's too much. This movie is straight comedy now. It, that's all it is. <laughs> oh, because, um, Curtin just kicks back now. He's just gonna, he's, he's not on his haunches or anything. He's sitting down. He leans back up against his little rock, okay? And, but he's very concerned. And he just realizes, oh, it's game on. Like, the, whether or not he wants to take this bed, like, that's what he's gonna need to do is just not fall asleep <laughs> before this full does. <laughs> so he's just leaned back up against the rock and he's got his eyes open and he's just looking at Bogart. Bogart is looking at him. Now he's leaned back up against a rock too. Got his little arms crossed and he is just laughing his ass off. Just he's just he won't stop laughing. Um so it's like wow. It's just out in the middle of um the desert like that though too. Just you two, just you with some crazy motherfucker like that. Um hell no, you know what I mean? Okay, so now <laughs> it's the next day. And these fools didn't sleep, right? Like they took the bed and neither one of them got any rest. So they're just back out in the hundred and thirty degree heat in the middle of this desert moving their burrows along <laughs> okay so like because they haven't slept in a long time um curtain is like almost passing out as he's walking along and so what's going on though is that dobbs is at the head of the burrows and curtains out the back like they have put some distance between themselves um but dobbs really is not tired the way that curtain is so he sees a tree okay and now he dips off of the trail and, and goes and is hiding behind this tree. And he takes out that gun that he has that has no bullets, but he grabs it. He's going to use the butt of the gun. And so he's got the butt hanging out and he's getting ready. Like he's just going to wait for Curtin to come up by this tree, not see him and knock him on the head. So Curtin's, you know, stumbling along. And um, just in time, though, he notices that Dobbs is chilling right there. He, you know, gets kind of snaps too, pulls out his gun real quick and has it on uh, Dobbs and tells him, quit. he's like, get your ass back up to the head of the burrows, full. Get your ass. Why are you just like hiding behind a tree with your, the butt of your gun in your hand? Okay, so now it's that night and they've built a little campfire and they've got, they've spread themselves out far away from each other. Like they're on far sides away from this fire. Like this is the farthest I've ever seen them in their little campsite. So, but, uh, Curtin's got his gun out. He's actually got the gun pointed over at Dobbs, like, probably 20 feet away from him. And he is just needing to pass out, right? Like, he's really in bad shape. Um, the way, like, I don't, it's like, I don't, I don't, I'm looking, do they have makeup on him to make him look, like, something weird with his eyes? But, like, his eyes are in horrible shape, okay? Like, he just really needs to sleep. You know, it's, I feel like maybe they've put something over, uh, his eyelids, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like they, his eyelids are literally drooping down over, you know, <laughs> it's kind of creepy the way he looks. So, and he's just like, his head is just bobbing down. Like he wants, he's trying to pass out. And so they show across the fire right over 20 feet away to where Dobbs is. And it's far. Like, we're looking at Dobbs as if we are at um, Curtin's vantage point. So they're not close up on him. But his, we can see the whites of his eyes. Like, he is just looking right at um, <laughs> Curtin. This, it's, uh, oh, it's gotten weird now, right? It's just like, what the fuck is really going on, dude? So, yeah, they've probably not slept for at least 24 hours at this point. So, you know, they just play the seconds out and uh, Curtin passes out, dude. Like, he just falls asleep. He lands on the ground, puts his head down. He's asleep. So just like that, though, Dobbs is up on his feet. He He's in different shape, okay? And so he, he waits for a second, right? Like, he's just kind of he's still looking at him, making sure that he's really asleep. But then he's up. He was just sitting on his haunches. He's just up, starts to walk over, comes, grabs the gun, kicks him over, and tells him, get up. And then now he's got him his hair in his hands. 
and he's got the gun pointed on him, and he's telling him, now the cards are dealt a different way again, and I'm, there's no more shuffling, there's no more dealing, there's no more calling for another card, he's like, I'm gonna be handling this shit from here on out, and, um, and Curtin's like, well, what are you talking about, and he's just like, I'm telling you, I'm not taking any more orders from you, like I had to do all day today, because, um, Curtin is the one that had the gun all day, right, and so, like, when he was gonna try and knock Curtin out with the butt of his gun, he wasn't able to accomplish that because Curtin had a gun with bullets. Like, that is the only reason why he had the upper hand. Well, now Dobbs has that gun. So, he's telling Curtin that he's finishing this, like, right here and right now. So, um, the Curtin says, oh, okay, so you're just gonna murder me now? And Dobbs is like, no, not murder. It's just saving my own life. I'm gonna do to you what you would do to me the second that I wasn't looking at you. It's like, really? Um, okay, you know what I mean? Like, Curtin cannot show him enough <laughs> who he really is, right? Like, he just, if he was gonna do all of this shit, he would have done it while he had the advantage with the gun. Like, he wouldn't have allowed himself to get into a position of passing out with his gun so that just this easy Dobbs can have it pointed on him if he really was going to just kill Dobbs. So again, I feel like they do have to have some type of makeup on this fool's eyes because his eyes are all drooped down even though he is now forced awake by um, Dobbs. And he's just telling him that, you know, well, you can do what you're gonna do, fool, but the old man is gonna catch up with you. And so, Dobbs says, oh, well, the old man's gonna be looking for me, Willie. He's like, well, I've got a great story already formulated for that. And he's like, you know what I'm gonna tell him? I'm gonna tell him that you um, tied me up to a tree, jacked all of our goods, and took off. And so then, he's gonna be on the lookout for you, and he ain't gonna give a fuck about me. So now he just stands, um, curtain up by his hair. He pulls him up by his hair, and he tells him, now up, march. He's like, now you're going to march to my music. Well, I've been marching to your music all day, your tune all day. And he's like, now you're going to march to mine. And um, a curtain's like, where? Where am I going, Full? And he's like, to your funeral. <laughs> he tells him. He, he, they're right at the edge of a little forest, right? So he makes him go into the forest and he's like, go, keep going. And so um, this is horrible because uh, Curtin really is like so sleepy that he's you know was passed out so he's like almost passing out as this fool is trying to make him go into the forest and so bogart has to grab him and he's like you're sleepy huh and he's like well that's fine because in like two seconds you're gonna be sound asleep and uh he just marches him forward in the camera right like it stops we see a tree and so we stop at the tree and bogart pushes him past the tree we can't see where he's just pushed him to we're just stopped at this tree and then we hear two shots. Bogart just shot his ass. And now we see Bogart coming back from behind this tree. And so he all he's walking all slow and he comes back over to the little campfire and he's got the gun in his hands. He's thinking. You can tell he's just thinking. And now he starts to talk to himself out loud. And so he's like, Maybe I didn't kill him. You know, maybe he just faked it and fell down, but I didn't really hit him. And just that quick they flash back over behind this tree and we see cotton a curtain, cotton, curtain laying down on the ground and he's moving though. Like he's moving his arms up to around his neck. Um, okay, so that quick though they cut back over to Bogart at the fire and you know, he's just thinking. So he grabs a little stick, makes a torch, sticks it in the fire, makes a torch, and now he's running back through Mm, maybe 20 feet is how far he'd gone into that forest with him. So he's gonna run back over to that tree, right? And so he um gets up to that tree and then now we, we get the vantage point of behind the tree. Okay, so this is what we didn't see at first. And he's now he's walking up towards us with his little flame, his little torch. And he keeps coming up and then he kind of stops and we can see feet and it's like, oh, there is um, Curtin still laying there, bleeding from the head, all spread out. You know what I'm saying? And so he comes down on him with that torch and he's just like putting it over his face back and forth to like make sure that he's dead. Um, and now he's satisfied that he's actually dead and that he's actually laying there where he had shot him. <laughs> okay, And that he actually did make contact with him and like he has bullet holes and shit and so um now he steps back and then he takes the gun and he tosses it at him and he's like here this is your gun anyway and then he's he's walking away and it's like what 
Okay, so yeah, he's just going to be in full-on um, self-conversation mode. So um, he's back out at this little fire, and he's like, nobody will find him. He's like, and I'll dig a hole for him in the morning, and he's pulling his little blanket up to the fire. He's trying to, like, stoke the fire. And he's like, this fire doesn't give much heat. And then he's like, a conscience. He's like, if you think you have a conscience, it'll drive you crazy. He's like, but if you don't think you have one, what can it do? It's like, um... <laughs> He's just all perched up on his elbow, looking at the fire. Crazy as fuckful. Okay, so then now they cut back over to um, Curtain. That's gone Cotton again. And he's moving, okay, a little bit. And But now they're just that quick. They're back out to Bogart at the fire, too. Okay, so now Bogart's like, yeah, I'm sick by all this fussing about nonsense and so now he's he's gonna try and lay down, but his eyes are like wide open at the fire. And then now though he does close his eyes. But for at first he's laying down and his eyes are all bulging out and he finally closes his eyes. Okay, they cut back over to Curtin. And now Curtin is actually starting to sit up. But you can see like he did. He's been shot in his upper chest, like probably kind of close to his shoulder. But he's he's like covered with blood, okay? But he's like sitting up. All right, now they're back over to Bogart, and his he had his eyes closed for a second, but now he bulges them back open. And then this is interesting. What they this this is a little bit too much. I don't like this scene. I don't like this play that they just did. This fool had just sat down at his little fire. He put his little torch back into the fire, and then he was talking shit about how the fire doesn't give much heat. Well, that's because there's not much flame to the fire. Okay, it was like very low. And he was right up at it, and he had to pull his blank. He had pulled his little blankie over him, was trying to get warm, and had laid down, closed his eyes for two seconds, and then they showed Cur Curtin getting up. Then they came back out to Bogart, and his eyes bulged back open. But then the flames of this fire just became like scorching. Like it's just like a scorching fire now. Like the flames are just all blazing. And I was like, um, why is this happening? Because he just said <laughs> that the fire is not giving any heat. And now um, the fire flame just gets so high that we we lose track of, of Bogart. Okay, so that's, they did that for a segue, but it's, it's, come on. Like, he just was talking shit about how he was called sin by his fire. So anyway, though. <laughs> They needed that fire to like take up the screen so that they could now kind of fade out of that. And now where we're seeing is this little village that the old dude had to go back to. And uh, there's two little like guards guys at the edge of their little village, right? And they hear some crackling in the forest. They rush over. It's Curtin pulling himself along. He's totally on the ground. He's but he's like dragging himself inch by inch forward. They rush up, they roll him over, they start dragging him into their village. Okay, so now it's the next morning, and Bogart's, like, packing up the burrows and shit. He's got a little um, shovel already laid out, but he's packing up the burrows, and now he's got the shovel. And what did he say he was going to do? Dig a hole for Curtin in the morning. All right, so this fall, um, he needs to learn how to make decisions. Okay, he starts to walk over toward um, where he shot him with the shovel. And he's like, well, maybe I shouldn't bury him. Um, you know, maybe I should leave him to the ants and the buzzards. Because in a week, he's like, it's very unlikely that anybody's going to find him out in the middle of this fucking desert, number one. And number two, in a week anyway, the ants and the buzzards will have gotten to him. But then he's continuing to walk forward. And he's like, but what if his eyes are open and he was just looking at me? And he's like, no, the best thing to do is to get to that railroad in a hurry. So he's turning around and he's walking back over to the um, burrows. And he says, yeah, no, I did right. I did right. And he's starting to walk away. And then he's like, you know, but maybe what I should have done was bury his clothes and then really just leave him to the ants and the buzzards. And then he's like, the buzzards. It's like, if the buzzards are circling around, then somebody would know that something is dead. And he looks up and he's like, the buzzards aren't here yet. And he's like, well, it's a good thing for me that I thought about this. So now he is, he had put the sh shovel away and now he's grabbing it back out and he's going to go um, bury this full. Alright, so hold up. There's something important I forgot to tell you. Um, when he was just 
conflicted about burying him or not burying him and he was heading back to the boroughs saying that he needed to get his ass to the railroad station as soon as possible um the boroughs started to he you know and that scared the shit out of him so he's like all startled and looking around and he you know he's got the shovel in his hand and he's like apparently he did it like a full circle and he's like the tiger and he was walking, I don't know, like, he was going both directions, right? And so anyway, he's walking, and then he says to himself, was that really a tiger? And, uh, you know, so then he was conflicted what the fuck to do, what not to do. Finally, he decided he needed to go bury him so the buzzards wouldn't give it away. So now he's walking through the fucking forest to where that tree was, to where he shot him. He goes to the spot... And he can tell that it's the spot because there's all kinds of blood on the ground, but Curtin's not there. So he starts to call out for Curtin, and he doesn't get an answer. And he's got to think about it. He's like, wait a minute, I can't lose my head. I got to get a grip here. And he's like, one thing is for certain, he's not here. <laughs> and so then he's like, ah, oh, the tiger. He's like, the tiger came and grabbed him and took him off to his lair. And he's like, so now, soon enough, there won't even be his bones left to tell this story. And now he starts to hysterically laugh again. And he's like, yes, this is as if it was, you know, perfectly ordained. And so now he's just walking away and he's all happy. Okay, so they just cut over to like a little tropical resort in the middle of the rainforest. And it's like, a, it is a resort. Okay. And in a little hammock is the old dude just chilling, okay? And he's getting fanned by two women. Like, the one woman is just handing him fruit after fruit, putting it up, feeding him. And the other one is, like, fanning him and shit. And then, um, oh, now he wants to do a shot of tequila. So the other chick puts the salt on her hand that he can lick. So he licks her hand to get his salt. And then she puts the bottle in his mouth. He takes a shot. And then she puts the, the lime in his mouth so he can clean it out. And like, he is at a tropical resort because like right behind him is this big ass pool, the infinity pool. And all the children are just splashing around in this pool. Like, it's a resort. Okay. And so that's where he was forced to go chill for a week because they needed to honor the saints and shit. And so then those two do, that very first came and grabbed him they come up and they're telling him in spanish you know your dude that was with you at first crawled through the forest we grabbed him he's shot up we got him in a hut he rushes over to come and check on this dude the dude is is co coherent curtain is awake and he's just explaining he's like yeah he shot me and left me there with my gun i think to make it look like suicide i thought about waiting for him until this morning and letting him have it but in my condition i'd probably miss him so i just dragged myself through the forest instead and um well, the old dude is like tending to his wounds and shit and he's telling him like full stop talking like you're talking too much and he's like no don't worry about me like i'm in great shape he's like i'm gonna pull through this um, if for no other reason than to get that full back. <laughs> so, um, he's telling him too, he's like, yeah, just so you know, um, Dobbs took off with all of our shit and is on his way north. And so the old dude says to him, like, um, I actually, you know, like we can't blame Dobbs. Um, and he's not like a real killer, like cold blooded killer, like as far as like just killers go. Um, it was too much temptation, leaving you two alone in the middle of the wilderness with a hundred thousand dollars between you. You know, I think he's as honest as the next fellow. Um, it's just, you know, gold brought out the worst in his character and uh Curtin ain't really trying to hear that he's like full he shot me down in cold blood and then he stood over me and shot me again um so i don't i don't think that that is representative of somebody that's not a killer and the old dude's like you know what though like if i was your guy's age and i'd been out there in that same situation he's like i might have done the same thing too <laughs> So then the old dude hollers out to his little tribe, right? He, they, he's the medicine man here now. So he's telling those dudes um, that he needs horses and he's got to get to Durango. And he's telling Curtin, he's like, not only are they going to give me horses to ride, but they're going to come with me to protect me. He's like, don't worry, we'll catch up to him and uh, we'll get, I'll get this all straightened out. And Curtin's like, no, I'm coming with you. He's like, no, you can't. You're weak as a kitten. 
He barely stand up. He's like, no, I'm coming. He's like, the old dude's like, all right, fine, you're coming. So they're riding along on horses, and obviously, like, they're making all kinds of time compared to Dobbs on foot, because all of a sudden, they're riding along. It's like two seconds later, they've been riding along, and they're all the way, basically, up to wherever, almost up to him, right? They don't see him, but what they see is a dead burrow. They see a burrow just laying on the side of the trail with the little pack and they're like, okay, he's not far ahead of us. All right, so then they cut to Bogart, and he is laying face down in the sand. He's, um, it's in a different, it's not the cactus desert anymore. Like, there's a little hill behind him. Like, he's real, real close. Like, I feel like he's made it just to, I feel like it, in his sight is this little town where they bought the burrows and shit. Exactly. Yeah. Like he falls, he's down, he gets up, he's calling to the burrow, he's pulling the burrow, he falls back down. Like he's, he's doing great fall work in this movie. Okay. So then he falls flat, face down again. He gets a, a burrow, burrow. And, you know, he's got all this dirt in his face and shit, you know, just giving us middle of the desert, needing to get water, everything. Okay, so now they come behind him and we see, yeah, like, he's like, this, the town is totally in his view. Like, he's, he sees the whole little town line. Okay, like, he's got a quarter of a mile to go. Okay. Um, and he's pulling all the burrows. He's got one, two, three, four, five burrows because he lost one, right? Like, they had had six they saw the one dead burrow, and he's got the other five. Okay, so I'm like literally people. Um, maybe a quarter of a mile is too far. Like, I is it feet, yards? It, it's not like maybe a football field. Is that a quarter of a mile? I I don't even know if it's like a football field away. Okay, I I, I don't think that it. it well, you may a foot. Let's call it a football field away from him. <laughs> he um stops and looks down like the ditch and sees this disgusting stagnant very dirty um unclean uh little hole of water and the burrows start to rush down to it he's rushing his way through the burrows to go dip his head into it first um Catherine Hepburn in dirty water got an eye infection that never left her for the rest of her life when she did summertime um, I don't know if Bogart had any lasting effects with putting, dipping his head into this water, um, that they have here in this movie. So he's got his head completely in the water and he's using his hands to put the water into his little afro. And he's just got his head just in the water and then one of the burrows comes up next to him too. And so then though we, because he keeps his head in the water like that, we just suddenly see a reflection in the water next to him, walk up next to him. And we see a sombrero. We see, we just, we're still seeing just the reflection. Finally, he sees it obviously too. Like he notices it next to him in the water, you know, this reflection next to his head in the water. And he looks behind him it's homeboy with the fucked up sombrero because he is now looking right up at this fool. We are even seeing all the more how fucked up this full sombrero is. He has two little holes in the front, like when the, right. If you're looking right underneath him, the part that's like in the front of his head, it, two big holes, another hole of a patch of it. Miss, it's just like really do. So, um, he's like, hola hombre you know and like they recognize each other right away <laughs> but bogart's just playing like everything's cool so um dude's just asking him if he has any tobacco and bogart's or cigarettes he says cigarettes do you have any cigarettes and bogart's like well no but i got some tobacco if that'll do so he hands him his little pouch of tobacco and the dude says you don't have any papers to roll it with and bogart's like yeah so he hands him his papers and um, this fool has two other dudes with him, two of those other 12 bandits. Okay. Just two of them though. And so he, they're passing around. They're going to start twisting up their little man-made cigarettes, handmade, man-made cigarettes. And he's like, he asks for matches too. So Bogart hands him some matches and the dude says, Oh, so you're heading over like 5,500 feet away. How much is a football field? Really? However many yards that is 50 yards, a hundred yards and 50 yard down i have no idea about football don't give a fuck about football but got the football field away you're heading right there to durango <laughs> right there <laughs> to durango <laughs> 
And Bogart's like, yeah, that's where I'm heading to. And um, he's like, because I got to go sell my burrows because I don't have a penny to my name. And those fools are like, you know what? We need money too. And Bogart's like, well, you know what? I could use some good mule drivers. Um, he's like, maybe, you know, even up to three, cause there's three of them. And, um, this fool starts to laugh and he says it in Spanish to his other two dudes, like what Bogart's trying to hire for right now. And this dude says to Bogart, he's like, how much is the pay? And, um... Bogart says two pesos. So um, all this dude says to him, he's smoking a cigarette now, and he's just like, he is such a killer. This dude is such a killer, right? So he's just like, hey, do I know you from some place? <laughs> and Bogart's like, no, um, no. And the dude says, um, are you alone? And Bogart's like, no, no, no. And by this time, one of the other fools who's sitting down on the ground is at Bogart's feet and is lifting up his pant to see that he has on boots. Because what? They will kill him just for that. Okay. So Bogart realizes what's going on. And what does he have? Nothing. He has no weapon, right? Because he had a loaded gun that he threw back over the curtain. So... All he can try and say is right now, like, all hard. No, I'm not alone. No, I'm, I'm not alone. Um, okay, well, if you're not alone, though, like, where's anybody else? And so he elaborates, and he's like, yeah, no, I got, like, two friends, dude, that are following behind me on horseback. He's like, you know, so they should be here any minute. And um, the third dude looks at his other boot, and this main man says something to him in Spanish. He says that to them. He, he says... This fool says he has two friends that are on their way on horseback. So that indicates that this that third dude um, needs to go up onto the trail and just take a look and see if, like, as far as they can see, you know, are there some fools kicking up dust on horses, rushing up? And now the dude turns back over to Bogart and he's like, you know, that's kind of weird. Um, a dude all by himself uh, with a whole bunch of burrows says that he has friends that are behind him on horseback. Like, that's just a weird story. So, um, dude's up at the top of the trail, whistles down, shakes his head no. Homeboy says, you know, your friends gotta be, like, way far behind you, dude, because we can't see any dust, even, from their horses. And Bogart's like, oh, you're gonna be along any minute, I'm telling you. And so right away, though, this boy, I know who you are. You're the guy in the hole that wouldn't give us the right, like, he knows it. <laughs> You're the guy in the hole that wouldn't give us the rifle when we were going to give you our watch for like 200 pesos. Like that. You know what I was like? You knew exactly who this was this whole time, right? And um, Bogart's like, I've never seen you before in my life. So that pisses this dude off and he throws his little cigarette down. And now he just wants to know what does Bogart have in all these bags on all these burrows. And so this dude just goes over to his bags and he's like, oh, it looks to me like you have a whole bunch of hides in here. And uh, Bogart kind of gets a little relieved that that's all the full things that it is. And he's like, yeah, that's that's what it is. Hides. And this dude's like, oh, it ought to bring in a whole lot of money. huh?" And still these two fools, they have slid down now. And they're, they're one at each foot of Bogart and they're pulling up his pant to like, to look at his boots. And I just have the hygiene going on right now. Everybody's hair, teeth, clothes, <laughs> it's filth. Okay. It's, it's filth. And, um, yeah, so like, that's just really important to point out about overwhelmingly what you're observing right now. And, um, Bogart backs away because they're pulling out his boot again and he's just trying to negotiate with these fools so he's like I, yeah i just want to make sure so you guys are sure you don't want to come along with me to help me out with these burrows so he starts hitting his burrows to get him trying to go back up the trail and they let a couple of the burrows they let them all go until the last one and then the little sombrero man stops the last burrow and he's like bogar says get away from my burrows let him let him go through and he pulls out a gun. He has a gun, right? But it has no bullets. And so he pulls it out, though. And the, right away, though, this dude in the sombrero tells him that um, you couldn't scare even, like... He's, he says, like, a miserable louse or something um, with this gun. He's, like, um, number one. <laughs> and number two, um, you can only shoot one of us. 
And then he points over to one of his other dudes and he's like, and he wouldn't even care anyway because the Federales are after him. Um... And so he says, like, so what about your little gun full? Like, we don't, that's not frightening us. And he's like, we're going to go ahead and take that chance. So they start to try and rush him. And he tries to shoot the gun and no bullets come out. Like, he's really um, acting like he's surprised about that. Like, he's shaking the gun. Like, he's really trying to figure out why this gun doesn't shoot. And so um, they rush up on him. Uh, One of them had a rock that he had already grabbed and was ready to go with. And so he hit him on the head with the rock. That knocked him down. And then the dude with sombrero, um, just out of nowhere, has this machete. And he chops um, Bogart two times with the machete. (laughs) We do not see that because the burrow is like blocking that view. But we just see this dude chop his machete down on to Bogart that we can't see two times. He chops him once and then he looks and then he chops him again. Okay, so he's dead and um, they start just jacking him, right? So the dude that just macheted him grabs his gun and then those other two go for his boots they each take a boot they start to fight both of them think they deserve both boots they start to fist fight one of them gets knocked into the pool of water um the dude with sombrero is just telling them to like stop fighting and like we need to get after these burrows the burrows are starting to run away um i need to really break it down they were a field not a football field like a cornfield like a little your back garden um, if you were doing like some rows of corn in your yard away from this town. Okay, <laughs> so these burrows are just running across this little half field. Okay, it's not a football field. I, I gave you the wrong impression. Because now that they are showing these burrows running away from these fools toward the town of Durango, um, it's like maybe 20 feet. Okay, <laughs> and so now these fools are just chasing the burrows into the town and they catch up to the burrows you know just like right at the little gate to the city and they start taking all the stuff out of the pallets on all the burrows and they really think it's just hides so they're grabbing the hides but then they see all of these what they think are like just bags of dirt so they start taking the bags and like flinging them into the wind or just dumping them down onto the ground and like beating the bags open and you know like what the fuck is this it's just dirt so they're just putting the gold dust into the desert dust um they they have no idea and so then they show um curtain and the old dude rushing up on their horses they're probably about as far away as um, bogart was when he got killed and so then these dudes are just taking the burrows into the town Now, right before they had killed Bogart, too, before they started rushing him and before he pulled his gun out, they said to him, um, we can take your burrows and sell them for just as much money as you could get. You know what I mean? So, like, why are we going to start working for you for two pesos to help you drive these burrows when we can jack them from you and go get as much money for them as you could get? So, like, that's what they're trying to do. They're taking the burrows into the town right now. And they're just going to try and sell the burrows. So that's also the reason why they were, like, emptying all of that shit off of the burrows' backs um, that was on there. Because the only value that they can see is for the burrows themselves. Okay, so they're coming through the town and this little kid is just chilling. But he sits up because he obviously, he's something, he just recognized something. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay, so the little boy runs off and um, goes and gets some adults, right? Well, actually, he's going to do that next. He rushes off toward these fools where they're taking, guiding these burrows to. And he starts checking each one of the burrows because in the very beginning, when they were selling the burrows to Bogart and his team, they were identifying each one because each burrow had a little brand in them and this dude was on a little clipboard and he was writing down the shape of each brand on each burrow to like tally up the price for them and so this little boy was you know he's in that village and he's a part of that so he is looking underneath the cloths of each one of these burrows to see the brand which indicates that these burrows are from this village so then he runs off to a building and then all of a sudden like all of the town just circles in around these fools trying to sell these burrows because each 
one of them is trying to sell the borough to somebody different. But now the town comes and forms a tight circle around them. Um, some dude comes up and steals this the one dude's machete out of the, his back pocket. Like, he doesn't even feel that somebody just came and took his machete out of its sling. And um, the other two kind of start to notice that they're getting circled in and they try and maybe flee but somebody pulls out a knife on them or whatever to like hold them in place so this one dude is doing all the talking the one with the fucked up sombrero and this old dude that originally sold the burrows to bogart and his team is just telling them you know these burrows are from this village and they're not yours and um dude in the sombrero is getting all pissed off so he reaches for his machete and he it's not there right so now he realizes that he's busted um they all get snatched up the village is just going to handle this themselves they all snatch up these three fools and throw them in jail no this is horrible and it's very i don't know it's just derogatory for this man that's doing this role but he has really jacked up teeth right okay so they shove him into this little jail door that's like see-through it's got like so there's one little like hole that his face and mouth can stick through and basically what he does is he puts his teeth through the um hole in the store and he's just like shoving his teeth through and, and opening up his mouth all wide around his face and just shoving his buck teeth through the store. <laughs> like um you know he i wouldn't do that so but that's what he's just really giving us some pronunciation of his jacked up teeth okay <laughs> <laughs> I want you to see this. He is putting his teeth through the hole in the door. So now they got away from that, and uh, these fools are riding in all fast on their horse now. Like we can see them seeing the town. Now they're about a football field away, but they're on horses, so it's going to get closer quick. Okay, so they cut back into the village just that quick. Federales so are there. These fools are digging their three graves. You're done. Get out of the graves. Line up against this wall. One, two, three. They're shot dead. These fools are now at the gates of the village. They heard the shot. They figure, oh, an execution just happened. The old man rushes up to the other old man and is telling him that Dobbs is dead. So, um, Curtin's like, what? How did that happen? And dude's like, the bandits got him. And, um, but they just shot the bandits. That's who we just heard getting killed. And so Curtin's like, well, what about our stuff? What's, where are our goods? And so the old man, he don't want to say like, where's our gold? So he's just like, where are our cosas, our things? And, um, the old dude's like, oh, it's all good. Like, we got all your shit. It's safe in our office. So the old dude's all relieved. He's like, oh, you know, he says our stuff is safe in their office. So they rush to the office. Curtain's tearing through the shit. It's not here. It's not here. Okay, keep your shirt on. Hold on. He's speaking Spanish. This little boy, the same little boy comes up and he's telling him, talking for a long time in Spanish, just to say, <laughs> right? I mean, he's talking for like 30 seconds in Spanish, just for the old man to say, um, the bandits, before they got shot, were talking shit about, you know, the stuff that Dobbs had on these burrows, and he thought that those bags were just full of sand to make them weigh more when he was going to bring them in to sell them. And so they asked the little boy, where is, where is the, are the bags of sand? And the boy's like, oh, you know, they're out by the ruins. So now everybody's rushing out to the ruins. Okay, so of course, though, to get out to the... Now, where was this shit, right? It was right at the gate of this town when the bandits had got the burrows right to the gate of the town. But now for these fools to get right back out there, they got to be riding for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it's like, well, that is not where the ruins were. Okay? Like the ruins were right at the gate of this little village. That's where those fools were dumping out the sand. But now they're riding like 20 minutes to get back out here. And of course, what else is going on? A norther, right? When they were first making their way the 60 miles through the desert that one time when all of the dust was just flying around them like a tornado like a dust tornado um and the old dude told them that it was a norther that's of course right now right at this village a norther is happening all right so they're um riding through the norther um they finally have made it to the little gate of the town at the the ruins 
And so they're a little crew, right? Because it's everybody from that little village uh, where the old dude was staying, the little resort in the middle of the forest, the rainforest. They all had come along with him, right, to give protection. So they're all riding with him, too. And they're just, like, going around in circles in this northern, in the ruins. And all that they start to find is the little bags where the gold dust had been sealed up in, right? So that's all they're finding is the empty bags. So they hand the old dude a couple of these empty bags. And he's, they got holes in them, and they're empty. And so he's looking at him for a second and then he loses his shit, just cracking up laughing too. And he's like, um, come on, Curtin, you got to laugh about it. He's like, if it's the Lord or nature or, you know, the, the gods, whatever you want to call it, um, it has a sense of humor because the gold went right back to where we just got it from. <laughs> he's just like... You gotta, you gotta laugh at that because, like, th- this is fate. So, um, Curtin starts to laugh too. Like, they are both losing their shit, just like Bogart was several times. Okay, so they, they're just, they're gone, and the old dude breaks it all the way. Down. I'm like, wow. All right, he said this joke is worth ten months. <laughs> Of labor and suffering. Wow. I, I, let me tell you right now, I didn't get an impression that this story had taken 10 months worth of our time, but, um, wow. Okay. So they though are just, they're like walking along. They've all the other little Mexican dudes that don't understand what's, they're just cracking up laughing too. Like everybody's laughing and now they're walking away. They're going to go lean up against the ruins. Okay, so finally, they, like, just keep laughing. And then finally, though, um, Curtin says to, he's like, okay, so Howard, like, what's next? Because then they, they stop laughing, and, um, they look at each other one more, and they crack up some more. But then finally, (laughs) Curtin says, like, what's next? So right away, though, the old man, he knows. He's like, well, I'm set for the rest of my life as a medicine man in this little village. You know, like, I'm gonna have five meals a day if I want it, and drinks whenever I want. I'm set. I'm good to go. You know, just the other day, they wanted to make me their whole entire legislature. He's like, I don't even know what the fuck that means, but he's like, I know it's the highest honor that they can bestow. He's like, that's what I'm doing. He's like, what are you about to go do? Um, and curtains like i have absolutely no idea and the old dude's like that's cool Phil. like you're so young he's like you got like three or four times in your life to make three or four more fortunes like this <laughs> he's like you know you're good and um curtains like you know the the worst that can happen isn't as bad as it seems before it happens right like you're always thinking it's gonna be way worse than it actually is when it happens Because he's thinking, he's like, you know what, right now I'm actually no worse off than I was when I was back in that little town in Tampico. And he's really, he's like, really, when you think about it, I'm only out like a couple hundred bucks. Because I feel like in that very beginning, he had $150 to put in on the cause. And so he's like, he's like, when you come down to it, I only lost 150 bucks. (laughs) And so all of a sudden the old dude says, um... I'll tell you what, go ahead and you take my share of whatever you can get for the burrows. Well, just sell the burrows. <laughs> Keep all the money and just use it to buy um, a ticket to go see that dude's widow in Texas. And he's like, um, that's better than writing her to let her know, you know, that he's dead and to just go there. And then he's like, plus it's July and it's their little fruit harvest season. And he's looking at him like, you know, you wanted to grow fruit, right? And the old dude hands him that fool's wallet, right? Because they had collected his wallet and read his little letter and shit. So he's handed him that dude's wallet and he's like, how about it? And he's like, all right, that sounds like a deal. So he takes the wallet. They both rush over. They get on their horses. Um, Old dude takes off with his little crew. Well, no, before they, they mount up and then they shake hands. Bye, Howard. Bye, Curtin. Good luck. Good luck. Um, They look old man's crew gathers around him and then they ride off. Now Curtin's coming back towards the town, right? He's going to come sell the burrows. And they go down to the ground and they show one of the empty gold dust bags next to a little cactus root. And then it says the end. So, yeah. Um, 
this movie is hilarious. It's like a lot hilarious. <laughs> Humphrey Bogart is hilarious in this movie. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's just like the worst person. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's a good one. And then the badges. We don't need no stinking badges. Um, that comes from this movie. Um, yeah, it's a good one. And this one's not hard to find. I'm trying to think. Like, I didn't ever see this movie until Turner Classic days. So, like, way 20 years into my enjoyment of old movies. Um, but yeah, it's a Warner Brothers really big one. Never will be able to put it up on YouTube. So, definitely worth finding that one. Watch it. It's, it's places for free as well. I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, that's a definitely worthwhile one. All right. See you next episode.